This version of It's Eric Nagel has been modified from its original broadcast. Content has been edited to fit this platform. Believe none of what you hear and half of what you see. It's Eric Nagel. And it starts now. Ladies and gentlemen of the universe, the next voice you hear... It's Eric Nagel. And thank you, Scott Shannon. Welcome to the program. My name is Eric Nagel. And also thank you to Steven Singer, who's back with us for the uh, the big push for Mother's Day, which is not till the middle of May. So you're going to be hearing about him a lot for the next several weeks. Um, he's a good friend of ours and always very supportive of the show. So we always thank Steven Singer for, uh, for doing what he does for us. Over there is the lovely and talented Giddles. Hi. How are you, Eric? And if you see Jordan, say hello. Hi everybody! Hi Jordan. You know I got I got I'm so upbeat. I, I love that intro. I just think it needs to be about thirty seconds longer. I thought so too. I was thinking <laughs> at least four and a half minutes longer. Okay, Let's we can do. Real what about what, those like ten minute or hour loops that people love to put on to YouTube? <laughs> just never stop. That disguise it as the actual song. You're like, oh, there it is, and you right. play it, and it's like it's just the riff over and over for an, like for going. ten hours. Who has that kind of time? assholes that's who has that kind of time <laughs> anyway welcome to the program everybody uh like us across the board and all the social medias at it's eric nagel uh go to it's eric nagel.com for links to all the audio and video stuff if you're listening to us on iheart radio and the iheart radio app we do appreciate that tell two friends so they can tell two friends and uh if you want to join us live each and every week go to either youtube or twitch all at the handle it's eric nagel you can hop in there and be part of the program live as we are doing it and of course if you're listening to this after the fact uh you know time Time travel. It's all weebly wobbly, timey wimey kind of stuff. Um, weebly wobbly, weebly wobbly, timey wimey kind of stuff. I don't know about that. And uh, if uh, you're listening in the past and you want to see the videos and everything, go over to the YouTube. The video is there for you for your viewing enjoyment. How is everybody this week? Not too bad. You know, he's got a lot of meat. What? I always have a lot of meat. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you posted like you had like you got something. Was it? Oh, yeah. I cooked up uh, an oxtail yesterday. Oof. And uh, yeah, it's awesome. I, just I don't think I've ever tried before. oxtail. Dude, so good. Did you make the soup or just like the. No, I made like a stew. I, so I did like a, like a jerk oxtail and I added some like coconut milk at the end. And, right. Uh, yeah, just simmered it for like a good four hours. Just falls off the bone. And yeah, oxtail is delicious. I was going to say, there's a good place really good. not far from my old apartment that did oxtail and never got it like it always oh. sounded interesting but yeah it's very jamaican it's very just island. like imagine like you, you know how how good short ribs are it's like that it's like that kind of like just like really just melty meaty flavor oh it's so fucking good highly recommend if you have a chance we were sold out for like two months and this was the first week where no one had a reservation on it so i grabbed it as soon as i was done like cleaning it up and it's funny because i was at work today my boss is like Whatever happened with that oxtail from yesterday? I'm like, oh, I bought it. He's like, oh, someone wanted to buy it. I was like, yeah, I bought it. <laughs> I never, uh, I never knew ox. T- I, I always heard of it, but I never knew it was that big a thing. Right. Well, the the reason why it's in such high demand at our shop is because we get a cow and a half a week, and you only get one tail from that. So like, you can only get <laughs> yeah, it to one supposedly. customer a week. How does an oxtail come from a cow? Because that's what it's called. Isn't an ox its own separate animal? Uh, there is an ox that's its own separate animal, but I think for the purposes of what we get here, like ox, they just is call it that. Tail. All right, so Wait, it's not an actual ox like tail. tail. Yeah, it's fox tail, like fo, it's like F A U X. Like those like purse vendors on the 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 uh, the street that sell like you know Prado bags and stuff like that. You guys are saying ox tail, but it's not spelled right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Nice. All right, no, but it's oxtail. It. That's what it's called. That's what that's what that's what the cow from a ta- uh, the tail the the tail from a cow is called an oxtail. So Never yes. had it. Um, I'll take your word for it that it's yes, uh, great. that it's good. I'll try it eventually. All right. Yeah, so We've got a lot delicious. to do and a lot to cover today. We have a lot of a uh, lot of stuff for segment two with trailers and uh, television movie updates for you. We've got a lot of uh, new food reviews for you. There's a lot of stuff that came in this week. And uh, where are we at with the disasters? Do we have a bunch of disasters for this week? We have a couple. All right. There's always some sort of disaster. (laughs) Don't have the produced intro yet, but we do have this. (laughs) This week. In disasters. disasters. Jordan, what do we have? 
Train wrecks, typhoons, tornadoes. Um, I mean, there was a lot of tornadoes this we week. We did have a, a, another train derailment. Uh, one rail car carrying hazardous materials, butane, form of liquefi- liquefied petroleum gas. Nothing where, happened except for the fact that it-, it Where? Uh, where was this? Montana. Montana, me. okay. Um, it did uh, spill some powdered clay into the, the river area, but also multiple boxcars of Coors Light and Blue Moon were spilled everywhere. I did see a nice little picture of a man in a boat. Very happy to go help clean up that mess. Yes. Do you think? I wonder. Do they get to keep what they clean up? Like if it's I don't know. if it's valuable like that. You know, it's not obviously chemicals or anything. But like, say one of those uh, train cars had, I don't know, coins from the from the Franklin Mint, <laughs> and they was being sent somewhere. If that spills out all over the the Great Plains, uh, you go to help clean up the wreckage. Do you get to keep? What you find, or they take that from you? Can you imagine you're going home with boxes full of commemorative Elvis plates from the Franklin Mint to your wife? Why not? Like, damn I, it. I think it's like the same thing, like, you know, when they find, like, an old Spanish shipwreck, like, you could find it, but you just can't clean it. There's laws get into, for that, though. Yeah. There's yeah, laws for that. I think, that, I think that. If there's this, the same thing. It's just it deals more with, like, shotguns, like, hey, get away from that. It's mine. Like, <laughs> it, it was interesting. The, the couple years that I lived in Florida where you'd always see guys out on the beach, like, early in the morning, older guys retired guys out there with their metal detectors and especially after storms not just like uh hurricanes but regular storms that were uh pretty rough the tiny seas uh tiny ship was tossed you go out there they're digging up stuff they're still finding not to a great amount but every now and then they're still finding doubloons spanish doubloons (laughs) are washing up all all time on on the coast of um islands in the in the caribbean and in, in florida there's an actual law where if you find anything like that, you're not allowed to keep it. So even if you had one coin, if you kept it or a couple coins, you keep it home as a private collector, you're allowed to do that. But you're never allowed to uh, engage in any kind of financial transaction with them. Not like you're taking the doubloons to the mall and you know you buying <laughs> stuff at, at Foot Locker with doubloons. Hey, doubloons. But if you go to try to sell them online, they have to be registered. They have to be um, huh. reported to some government outlet it's usually the main government in like spain or wherever the ship departed from because there's still old bank records from like the 1400s or some shit yeah that's just like no matter what happens yeah but you're not calling it's kind of like the it's like the disney thing where it's just like after king charles dies it's like that yeah you can never (laughs) take this gold you you um it's not like you can call these banks in in spain say hey i found doubloons there's a there's an actual uh office organization something for the um i know for in the state of florida and then maybe even the federal government i don't know where it goes up through there but there's a an office in in the state of florida that you have to contact because you can uh they have to i think they take it or you have to donate it to a museum or something is one of the two options yeah so if you find any of that stuff all of a sudden it's like oh cool i found treasure yep it's like uh the Simpsons episode where they pull up the uh, the war chest and they open it up and it's all this old German art that was stolen during World War Two. Yeah. The police show up and then some rich German guy throws it all haphazardly into the back of a Lamborghini and then drives off not giving a shit about it. That's what happens if you find gold. It's funny. Bones. There was a, a later episode actually where they explained how the sea captain came to be. And it's like he was looking for like a, a sunken treasure and like him and his wife, like he kept going out and he could never find it. And when he finally found it, the town of Springfield took it. And like ended up building like a charter school or something like that. And he's like, a yar. <laughs> it's like, it's so bad. It's one of the later seasons. So yeah, back, to, Mont- like later back seasons. to Montana, train um, crashes, knocks out all these uh, cans, cases, containers of Coors Light. And what else? Uh, Blue Moon. Um, Does Coors Light own clay. Blue Moon? Yes. Oh, yeah. they do. Okay. So let me ask you this then. It's in high demand. Sales have never been uh, higher in recent times than they were in this past week for Coors because of the controversy over the new Bud Light promotion where right. people are getting upset. Their Kid Rock is shooting like cases of, uh, people are fucking of Bud Light with, <laughs> with assault a, rifles. A there's pe- there's videos of people throwing them out, th- dumping them Snowflakes, into the sewers. Man. Snowflakes. And, uh, so triggered, literally. Yeah, so what, what, what's what been going <laughs> well, on if you're not aware is that <laughs> Anheuser-Busch did some sort of uh, promotion <laughs> with um, this guy who became a girl. Um, 
Devin Mullaney. Yeah. And I guess they were trying to reach a a new trans transformed into this. And they, they're trying to reach, I guess, a, a whole new demographic, a younger audience, a, 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 an audience that's not normally known for to being catered to by a beer company. And they put its face on the can and everybody started freaking out on, on the Internet. And it's one of those things that I don't think is really that like online. It's a big deal. But in real life, I'm not seeing people, you know ransacking 7-Elevens and liquor stores grabbing the the Bud Light and throwing it out into the streets and and all this other nonsense there. But hey, people got to be upset about something. That's just the way the world works nowadays. Uh, But but yeah, but the sales of Coors Light went up through uh, no, really high because everyone said fuck Bud Light and started buying Coors Light. Why that matters, I don't know. I think Bud Light's terrible. I think Coors Light is terrible. I am not a beer drinking fan. It's all about people having their foundations in America shook because, oh, no, they put a rainbow on the can and wrote, he, her, yep. oh, no, burr. Just like the Hershey Fucking candy losers. Yeah. Rock's such a loser, dude. He's the guy who identifies as a poor rich person when he's a rich kid. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. his family was extraordinarily wealthy, and he plays up this role of, like, I'm this hillbilly. No, dude, he's the one who's pretending. Like, what the fuck, dude? Nah. Sorry. But, like, this, it really bothers me that these conservatives are this triggered over a literal can of beer. Yeah. Like, it's so fucking dumb. <laughs> yeah. It, it, the, the funny thing <laughs> is, is that they're going now, and without getting super crazy political on it, it's they're, they're really mad about it. So they're like, well, now we're going to do Coors Light. And Coors Light, since the 70s, has pioneered inclusivity and, yeah. and, and, you know, right gay rights trans rights whatever since like the 70s and you know 80s and 90s they're gonna ignore that because they want to it's just it's finding something to be mad about and i i'm tired of people just finding something to be just ridiculously mad about in and and flex and you know like kid rock shooting stuff travis tritt is now saying well i'm gonna get take it off my rider i was like the internet's going who's travis tritt (laughs) you know like Stop, it's just, sh- it's stop just showing so your ignorance. He's a just, country he's music so legend. I understand that, but you know, anyone under the age of like twenty five doesn't yeah. know who that. Well, maybe he is. should just die. Oh, <laughs> See, that's wow. not the All answer right. either. That's... No. no, but I could say it because we have freedom of speech, Eric. Not on the internet, you don't. But in real do life, we? you do. Not in Tennessee either. No, people don't no, understand that. Not in Tennessee, that. not in a lot of states. A lot of people <laughs> don't understand that. It's like, oh, you know, um, on these platforms, I have the right to say what I want. I have freedom of speech. You don't. You don't have freedom of speech on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, iHeart, any of these places. That- no one in the chat knows who this person is, Eric. What? <laughs> who, Travis Tritt? Really said, who indeed? Who in here actually knows who that person is? I do. I, mean, I used to I, have I him on a all the time. Travis Tritt? Travis Tritt, yeah. He was a, he's a really big, I mean, he's, it's yeah, he's a long time ago, but he was a really big country star. He's, he's playing a country festival out here, like, soon. I think he did stuff with NASCAR, too. I'm not, oh, all the time. Yeah. Which go, you know, par for the course with all of that. Um, I don't give a shit about the Bud Light thing. I don't drink it. I'm not a fan of the of the uh, the beverage itself. I don't care about this. Just like I didn't care about the Hershey controversy a month ago with the candy bars. But it's yeah. never a controversy. It's a bunch of right wing people just stomping their foot because they're upset. That's all it is. It's not it a controversy. A con- it, uh, be, well, what else are you going to call it? All right, outrage. New outrage. Yeah, that's it. That's it. It's outrage. All that's right. what it is. New segment, new Jordan. Get to work. This week in outrage. Oh, man. All right, Trust so we got me, this week in disasters, and now this week in outrage. So. We might have to stagger them like every other week. We do a disaster <laughs> or we do a outrage. See if you can get that old promotion shot of Morton Downey Jr. Jr. with his mouth open and the cigarette out, and then mix it with like the Rolling Stones mouth thing. Like get a whole bunch of different <laughs> mouth things on there. Just like Russian so upset. I'll just put him in Steven. The old Tyler's Twizzlers mouth. ad from the '80s where you just saw the lips sucking oh, up the, the Twizzler like it was spaghetti, which was gross. I know, uh, so gross. Yeah, looks like the lips from uh, tried. yeah from Rocky Horror. So you have that. Uh, any other disasters happen this week? Uh, there was a uh, wasn't the candy factory fire. It was a candy or factory explosion that exploded. In Pennsylvania and some lady survived because she that was fell the into Hershey's chocolate, chocolate factory. That was weeks ago. No, this was a different one. A, wait, <laughs> a, a second one. candy factory it explosion. It was a candy factory that blew up last week. It wasn't Hershey though. No, there was a there was um, a while back there was Hold a on. chocolate factory. That was uh, the Hershey's chocolate, one of the Hershey's chocolate factories that blew up or had a fire or something. 
Okay, so this was, yeah, the 24th. Yeah, this is Pennsylvania Chocolate Factory. It doesn't say... Jeez. It has to be. What other pen, uh, chocolate factory? This is March 27th. This is literally last week. Yeah. This, I'm not like, this isn't like two weeks ago. But it moves so fast. It's ancient history at this point. <laughs> yeah. We have new disasters to, to, to figure out. Right. So, all right. A chocolate factory gone wrong. A train derailment with beer all over the place. This is turning into a movie. And not even the action movies with disasters. This is the stuff R.M. Anymore. Palmer Chocolate Company. This is a different chocolate company, Eric. Never heard of it. What do they make? Telling you. Does it say they what make, they make? Yeah, they make these right here. I have them on my fucking desk. The candy. Oh, you actually do store. have Palmer. <laughs> That's oh, a I've never heard of this brand. Yeah, they I've sell, seen it's, it. But... It's like, yeah, it's just like the it's like the shittier versions of like the Easter candies. They do like Easter candy stuff. Uh, so I always get it once on sale. Not Uncle Phil in the chat saying, yeah, they made those cheap, awful gold coin chocolates. Right. Oh, yeah. OK. So it's a low level. It's like they the, do like the holiday. Like it's like a Brock's shit. level. Yeah, they're not good. Yeah. Gotcha. So that's when we need to do bag. something that interrupts, uh, you know, the segment here. Um, one hour ago. Train derails near Floyd Boulevard in Sioux City, Iowa. Like legitimately an hour ago, a train derailed. <laughs> All right, so you that's, can't make it that's up. two for the day. It's that's two for still, the day. Where's that one third more. one? All right. One more. We got an hour. Yep. All right. So no injuries. Um, that's good. Train cars were empty at the time of the derailment. So yeah, it was n- nothing carrying. But yep, another Union Pacific off the rails. All right. The old Union Damn. Pacific doesn't come around here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> It does. It just makes very a lot of unscheduled stops. Um, <laughs> all right, so that's it for this week in disasters. Uh, now we're going to go over to Jordan for sports. Jordan, what's going on in the world of sports? Uh, the only thing that's going on this week in the world of sports is that we only have 178 more days till the end of the regular season of baseball. Oof. Oh, thank Back God. Here. It's moving very fast. That's, that's good news <laughs> to hear. Ooh, I'm going to try this hop tea I got. What is that? Ooh. I got a a green tea that is sparkling right. and flavored with hops. So are we who t- who makes that? Well, all right. So do that. And we'll do the consumer stuff later. Then. Oh, it's really good. Skylark Brewing. Hmm. I've had like their regular um, uh, seltzers that are hop flavored, and they're really good. This one's green tea and hops. Very nice. Just be careful what you say about seltzers and their 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 uh, their flavor profile because then you'll get beat up on the internet about it. Yeah, by Wait, an actual happened? seltzer company. So apparently, Wild Bill didn't was didn't take Giddle's review of the uh, Rocket Pop seltz, uh, soda to. Oh, this kindly. has caffeine in it. I didn't even know. Wow. Yeah, okay. they were they were none too happy about it. No, they were not happy at all. And uh, you, we're trying to tell them it's they's like oh because it doesn't have alcohol in it. It's like. Okay, one, it probably would help if it had alcohol in it. But two, <laughs> uh, no, he said it was extremely sweet. And it's like, well, what do we have the profile? It was something like that. We have the profiles of children. What are we supposed to not have, you know, sweet seltzers? No, it just said, what, ki- what kind of that. savages are we having sweet soda? I was like, it, there's a difference between sweet and like, I got Swing diabetes sweet. the second it touched <laughs> yeah. my tongue. And we life. were actually excited about it because it was made with pure sugar cane. Not a lot of products right. are made with pure sugar anymore, the sugar cane. Yeah. And when they are, they're usually fantastic. Like when you can find an old fashioned soda company that makes uh, like black cherry soda, or root beer with the real, um, with the real, uh, what is it, molasses and root beer? Uh, no, it's roots. No, no, sarsaparilla. I've, well, that's, a, that's its own thing. But you know what I'm talking about, like right. legitimate ingredients that's not Ooh, a high fructose corn syrup or aspartame and all that. You're like, oh my God, I want to get that. Like when you get the, they have the, the bottles of orange crush that are made from real, uh, from pure sugar cane. You're like, I'll take that over than the, the other versions. We were excited for it. And it turns out it was, abysmal it was really sweet and no one cared yeah it, it was just like all right well is what it is and then they were like how oh what are we supposed to do blah, 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 make a better product then you know or take criticism for it here's yeah, giddle's we're, address we're not you're, you're not that far from <laughs> go pay him a visit exactly. what do you want me to do it's right down the street we have nothing to do with it move on get on with your life um i want to show you a video before we go on to uh, the consumer stuff here. Are any of you familiar with the Kool Aid Challenge? I am not. Is so, it? I I know what it is because I took a wild guess beforehand, and Eric told me I was correct. <laughs> you were ninety. You were ninety percent correct. Oh my god! Yeah. 
Um, so the Kool-Aid challenge I thought was somewhat recent, uh, but apparently it's been going on for about 11 months now on TikTok because stupid TikTok, everything has to be a challenge, you know, to, to trend and, and go viral. And, and, uh, some people try to pay, play it off as like, no, these trends, it's a communal thing. It brings people together. People are just having fun. This isn't having fun. This is causing big problems, injuries and damage to property so what this is is kids are going around to houses that have vinyl fencing and they go running full speed and dive into it and then jump up and yell oh yeah and then they run away God, that's right? pretty great so there was a bunch of little clips and news clips i pieced it all together there's no uh there's no real audio for this because a lot of them are security cameras that don't have the audio anyway so um i put all this together but you're going to get an idea of what this is all about and how r ridiculous this is now i will point out that if this is, happens to your property i would be livid like i would i would go kill these kids but if you live across the street and you happen to see this or the footage of this it's hilarious so i'm kind of torn i'm like on both sides of the coin here of this being <laughs> like if they did that to my, to my place i'd be you know i'd get out weapons and i'd be going for blood uh if it happened to the guy across the street i'm like oh that sucks but i'd be laughing about it so um all right let's watch this montage here of uh, ki uh and i saved the best for last two in the in the montage so stick with me here for this so here we are kids are just oh running through fences God. yelling oh yeah and then they get up and they run away oh i would kill him This is this is insane. I I can't believe this. Look is at a this. Real Watch challenge. this kid here. Watch. Full speed <laughs> doesn't break. He bounces off the fence, still running. It's like most extreme elimination challenge when they have to try and go through that door and then the one door doesn't open. Right. Uh, this I would love for look one at of this them clip to go here. They like ran this. through it, but their car's there. Their car is right there. It's like all right, well you can identify yeah, they the car. Just drove the car through it. Might as well. I mean, look at some of these photos here. They looks like That's they did. This no. is the best one. Watch this. Six kids get out of two cars. Seven kids get out of two cars. They run and they they jump out of the car and run through this guy's fence. So they hit six different sections on this person's property. All of it destroyed. They all ran block block walls. That that that's it. No more no more of this fucking tiger shit. pits. Tiger pits like they do in <laughs> Vietnam. You know landmines. I just spikes. Bring back landmines. They look like the opening scene to Yellow Jackets. So that was like, my backyard. What what happens if they do this and some you know some idiot has trained his you know pit bull or German shepherd to attack anything that comes into the yard and these kids burst through and that dog attacks them. Not your fault. I guarantee the homeowner is still going to be in trouble. It, it, it's it's one thing where if um, I feel like you know how they have the law. Hold on a second. Something. You know how they have the laws for the pools. Where if somebody uh, sneaks into your backyard, even though you have a fence, you have to have a certain other uh, set of fencing around the right. pool legally to cover you. If, God forbid, somebody drowns or gets hurt there, that you're not responsible because you did everything you could. Um, your your property is fenced in. You have a pit bull, uh, pit bull, pit bull that's licensed and North registered, right? Um, because you have to register pit bulls if you have them. They got to get those um, that coating tattooed on them. Whoa, um, where that's not around that's here not you do okay because yeah that's not a nationwide thing I, my mom's it's not, like not? no oh wow no. i didn't know no, I've, had, I've had pit bulls growing up all my life my mom's got two of them and that's not that's not a thing at all the, yeah they're supposed to have their registration number or some kind of number that's tattooed huh. on them um but yeah if you, you have to have it registered so if you don't have the dog registered um you get in trouble and then you I guess you're held responsible. But if you have kids in this circumstance plowing through your fence and then the dog just goes and mauls them, that's self defense. That's home protection. I don't think that's self defense. Correct. Damn. That that's might the be the episode title. title. Better. <laughs> um Yeah, if, if the dog goes and attacks the kid as he plows through the fence going, Oh yeah, and then oh no, and then the dog, you know, um, <laughs> like from Stand By Me, it's sick balls, and then the dog goes running and chomps the kid right in the nuts. Um, yeah, that's not your problem anymore. You know, that kid, you, it's breaking and entering. 
Well, I mean, you've heard, yeah, but you've heard these stories where some idiot is breaking into a business and falls through the ceiling, breaks his leg and can sue the the company. Right. You know what I mean? Like, so th- this is, this is a dangerous, stupid prank. Like it's the same as that, you know, that bucket challenge where, you know, the guy goes and puts a bucket over the girl's head and, you know, she hurts herself and gets hit. Like what, why are we doing such stupid, stupid challenges? Bring back the milk crate challenge. No right. one got stupid. hurt on that except for idiots who deserve to get hurt. Like right. no innocent bystanders got hurt in that. Yeah. Just lots of broken ankles from old people who thought they could do it. Ice bucket challenge. Like just idiot, stupid one on one. Explain more about challenge. the current bucket thing. There was that story with the lady at Target. So she was at Target and she was just shopping. And I've seen these videos. So the idea is like you go and you take like a basket or a bucket, you run up behind somebody, put it over the head, and then you stick it on your head and you act like, oh no, someone got us both. Well, apparently this lady had like, I don't know, something like vertigo or something happens where, you know, in confined space, she freaks out. She had it on her head, falls backwards, cracks her head right open. And it's like yeah, she uh, I think she had epilepsy or something, right? Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. The, the bucket like, over her head freaked her out and triggered her epilepsy and she started right. losing control, fell and, and smashed her head on shelving units or something. Right. Yeah. So it's like. They still haven't found the people, uh, the kids that were taping her that did this, which I don't understand because it's. Been, I know it's been a couple it days. Like, it seems but like you have, would have found them. You have security footage in these stores, like every aisle, every inch of those stores on the floor. Oh, trust me, Target is, has cameras everywhere. Yeah, there's cameras everywhere. So how did they not have kids walking in at like you can trade even if you if certain angles you don't have a good shot of their face you get those cameras where they're walking in and right. out of, of the uh the building and them i don't know and especially if so, if someone collapsed in the store in that aisle they would go to the tape and be like what happened yeah you know what almost I mean? like, immediately like, so i don't know that it is a weird story for that um and yeah i don't i don't know it's very odd that they don't have videotape of this, especially because it was a prank that you do videotaping. No, I, I'm sure they have the tape of it. That's that wasn't what was in question. The question is, is they have the tape? Those stores. Well, are that's what so, I'm saying. Like, they should know who the people are. That's right. that's the issue. It's like, how have there not been any um, arrests or at least anybody identified at uh, at this point? You have every angle possible, of uh, and multiple minutes of it from them walking in and out of the store. How did they not it'll, identify it'll, these it'll, kids? It'll yet. turn out that it was like somebody who is like higher up in the community's kid, and they just like hit it somehow. Because that's usually what happens whenever something like this happens. You're like, how did this not get on tape? It's always because it was like they're trying to hide something. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, think I, I mean, that, you don't know, right? I mean, that, of... that well, that professional hockey player's son just threw that fucking wheelchair down the oh yeah I down saw the that. ramp a week ago yeah like two weeks ago but, remember that but like, you knew who it was and you knew that he did I'm... it it the punishment yeah, because... is what it, we it hasn't been handed out to it yet that's a little different not knowing who did this is still is questionable at this point when you have so much footage of, of these kids in there that's not, I don't know it's not, it's something about it's not right about that part of the story like I don't know how, I don't know how you don't any know of those kids were, were bragging to their friends and then their friends are gonna rat them out it, it has to happen it's just the way human nature works nobody keeps a secret <laughs> when it comes to any of that stuff well I mean so speaking of pranks so like we got this stupid one where they're running through the fence we get those bucket ones uh, our buddy Rob sent us that article where that YouTuber was making a prank video at uh, Virginia Mall, and the dude he was trying to prank shot him in the stomach. Oh yeah, yeah, I posted that in the chat. Yeah, yeah, gets shot. So I guess and he's like, "Oh, it's just a prank. You weren't supposed to do." It. It's like, dude, maybe don't stop just pranking go people. people, dude. Like, we are in a country that it keeps relaxing gun laws. Like, do not go <laughs> prank people. Like, you are gonna get shot. Yeah, like oh, there yeah. is the odds are going up that you will get shot. There, uh, there was a clip I saw today. Um, I forgot where it was, but it was setting. It was set at a pretty upscale-looking Dunkin' Donuts, and there was an old guy who was just sitting. Oh, I saw that video. At, 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 at like a booth and a table and had a laptop or something, and this kid had set up a camera, I guess, on the other side of the the floor area, and was behind him, behind his bench, and then leaning over and tapping him like up here, so like the guy would constantly look. It was the stupidest thing. And the guy's looking around, does whatever. The lady behind the counter tells him, she goes, he's right down there. He's holding a camera in his hand. He's right behind you. It's this stupid <laughs> yeah, kid here. So and funny. she's like, I don't want you uh, fucking with my customers. 
right. then the guy gets up and turns around. The kid's like, oh, sorry, I was just doing He's like, what were you doing? And the guy was very calm, didn't throw fists or scream or anything. Very, very passive. And he's just like, what are you doing? I don't understand this. You know, oh, I was just doing a prank and everything. Why would you do that? I don't know. Okay. So it seems like it was going to be like nothing. And then he walked over to the side of the counter, talked to somebody there, maybe the manager, the, I don't know. And the guy, the kid, looks college age, I'll say. Maybe at a high school senior at, 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 at youngest, but somewhere from there into like early 20s. Right. And he's sitting there still documenting and talking about this. And he's like, oh, I think the cops are here. Did they call the cop? Oh, my God. I can't believe they called the cop. He's still there. If you if you get caught with this shit, why wouldn't you why wouldn't you book? Like why wouldn't you get out of there, right? He stayed there. The cop comes in. They're talking for him. And the cops talking to him. He's like, "What are you doing?" He's like, "You know this is stupid, right? That you're like doing these, you know, uh, something." He said something along like chasing he's views. Like, chasing views. Yeah. Chasing views can can cause a lot of trouble and and could be pretty dangerous. And um, the guy came over to the cop and said, uh, "Could you get his information?" And the cop said. I could, but I can't give that to you unless you're pressing charges. Are you pressing charges? And the guy goes, I'd like to press charges. And the yeah. kid turns around and goes, what? And he goes, okay, I need your ID and your and all your other yeah, stuff. Yeah, he's like assault, uh, assault, uh, you know, like all these different things. Uh, b- like, like harassment and, and mm-hmm. bullying and, and, and all. Yeah, I've, and I think... Uh, I think was was assault in there. Did he say that? To um, you? Yeah, he, he said touched that. Touched him in any way. Assault. It, it it depends on where you're at. Like assault and battery can be two different things. Mm-hmm. They could be combined. And like, so if you touch somebody without them wanting to touch you, you can be put up for assault. Okay. Whether so it sticks or whether I remember, it goes. It yeah, assault. there was something in there along with harassment and bullying, whatever. Right. The cop had to take the kid's information. And then the guy, he's the the kid's looking at the guy and goes, "What are you doing?" And he goes, "Well, and he's like, do you plan to? Are you, you going to sue?" And he goes, "I'd like to sue." And he's like, Jeez. "I'm definitely going to." And like the guy never raised his voice, never got you know intimidating or anything. And he's a big old dude. Like you could tell when this guy was younger, he was, I don't know, he he did some sort of physical work. Maybe he was an athlete. Maybe he's right. a biker. I don't know. But he's a big old dude, and. Um, very low key, talked like this, very respectful to the officer, to the people at the, in the in the Dunkin' Donuts, said I would like to sue. Then it cuts to the the officer escorting the kid out of the Dunkin' Donuts. It's in the parking lot now. And this is where the cop's telling him, he's like, it's like, it's really dangerous chasing views, stupid shit like this. This is what's going to happen. And the kid's like, I don't, this wasn't that big a deal. And it's like, no, it's a big deal to everybody else because you everybody thinks this is fucking canon camera like they can just tape you at all times now and and do whatever they want go ahead but here's the thing is that video real yeah it is are we sure i saw it on a couple news things unless they the news fell for it too and because like there's something about it that just didn't feel right like when he is walking out of the Duncan, how did the like was there there was someone else videotaping with him right uh that was body cam footage i think on the way out because it was like a it was like a locked off shot ahead of them while they were walking out. The one that I saw. Huh. All right, hold on. Uh <laughs> Like it just seemed there was a lot of setup shots for one kid to be there like it, something doesn't seem right about it. So far I'm not seeing anything Proving I saw that, that, this, same that this was not uh, that this was fake. Well, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying just like the video itself. There's just something like not right about the end shot to me about like them like somehow both walking out in frame while someone else is either holding the camera in front of them or he went ahead and set up the camera. And that's what it's confusing me. I don't know. Unless he had um, unless the kid had a partner with him that we didn't see on camera that was taping that shot across the room. So that might have been the the kid holding the camera. So that kid might have been documenting it as the cop is walking the other kid out of the That's what I'm that's what I'm like trying to figure out. Yeah, cuz yeah, cuz there is The what? Hmm. Did Kittles just cut out? I think so. Like No, no. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. The, it, uh... it sounded like your <laughs> it was feet a hard went stop. <laughs> like it's just like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, my I made my mic cut out or something like that. All right, uh, repeat I hit, what you I said hit, then. I hit play on the video. Yeah, no, there is another person holding the camera. The whole okay, time. so that's where the other footage so there comes was, from. So there was two people. It wasn't just the guy. Okay, 
Well, hmm. we we will see uh, in coming days, but right now it and is. It's just, it's just, I don't know. It's just still weird though, because like the cops just like walking him. I was like, gotta know your audience. He's like, it's just, it's just weird, you know. Like, I don't understand why this guy is suing me. He's like, you shouldn't chase views. Then it fades out. Like, it's, just, I don't know. It feels the very police is, the police it, didn't put that out. That was that was them. That was that kid who put it out. It's just yeah. It, That's why, why it's it, cut that way. If if it was footage from the cops or if, like when they well, then this kid must have a stupid lawyer if he's gonna put this video out there of there's him kids actually who are, yeah they're stupid, stupid. Anyway. there's plenty of you can look on, on like not like reddit's <laughs> really credible but you can look on reddit and, and other places like reddit where you're seeing countless stories of these people putting up videos thinking that you know it was cool to do what they did and then like days later all of a sudden the cops show up or they're getting sued for you know for destruction of property because they were caught yeah. Because you posted the video and outed yourself. So, all right, now you have a lawsuit. Now your parents have a lawsuit if you're underage. These kids, these people that are chasing these stupid challenges all the time. And it's not like doing the, um, I don't know, remember like a like a year or two ago where people smacking themselves in the face with burritos or, or the tortillas or something like that. It's not those kind of stupid challenges where you just go, why are people doing this? It's right. these other things that are pretty elaborate and pretty destructive violent in some cases and all of a sudden uh th there was um there was a clip i should have pulled this one down there was a clip where these kids not kids guys like 20s late 20s early 30s were getting out of their cars at red light and then hopping on other people's cars like in oh, yeah, the traffic light like on a highway situation like if it's a four lane road that had you know right. an intersection all that they would get out and they would hop in the bed of a pickup truck they would sit on the trunk of somebody else's car and then they're kicking the cars and and then they run back in their car as soon as the light turns green and they they haul off and what they don't realize is a lot of the newer cars now maybe it's just the electric cars that do it because i know tesla i think has it they have those cameras on your side doors oh yeah Oh, so yeah. now they it records you going up to the car. If somebody else is going to try to pop your lock, there's now footage that's streaming to a cloud service. So if someone steals your car, you can log in and go, oh, here's the footage of that person breaking into my car. Because I think they're right where the uh, the rear view mirrors are, where they meet the well, that was well, well, that was right before. Because remember, there was like in 2016 to about 2020, like conservatives hated Elon Musk and Tesla's and they would like mm -hmm. key the cars and like cars would park across charging stations that they couldn't charge because they hated electric vehicles and I remember it was always so funny because the cameras caught them every single time oh, yeah. like key in the cars walking up to it trying to be all sneaky and it's just like dude we see you on camera are you fucking dummies like it's just so stupid <laughs> um, our friend Bartholomew in the chat Sarah assault is anything that makes the victim feel threatened if I remember right battery is actually touching so the old I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you, I guess legally holds up. But the second you poke somebody like that, it's like I am now suing you for assault and battery. Well, and like I was saying, I was me. saying in the chat, assault, battery, even kidnapping can be different. Like in Arizona here, assault is only used. We don't use battery. What about a pepper? And we have just, yeah. we only use Chippeson. <laughs> we only use assault in terms of what happens, but it's varying degrees. There could be misdemeanor assault, felony right. assault, different degrees. We never use battery. Each municipality or state is different on how they do it. If you've got someone back to do a corner and you're not even touching them, but you're holding them there, that's kidnapping. Yeah. You know, and, and or, you know, you know, taking someone under hostage. Like there, there's so varying degrees and it's weird in how it's all categorized. So like this guy touching this guy, even in the most minor way can be assault. Right. sneezing on somebody you can be well the thing, well also too like so i i just googled this whole story and like it the only thing that says that there was a lawsuit was the reddit page that it was on mm -hmm. uh like there's nothing else even comes up about this story but in the comments someone left a very clever comment that just said the old man got revenge with the ultimate prank by telling him he was gonna sue that kid and scared the shit out of him that's why the cop let him go yeah so the old man probably did that probably, probably got him back pranked, real quick pranked him back really good by being like yeah i'm gonna sue you for all and this kudos shit. to like, the cop trouble. for i mean playing along with it too you know it's like yeah. hey this doesn't really involve the cop too much unless you know that guy was going to press charges but you know after he's escorted the uh the kid out there if that's the case he probably went back to the old guy you want to press charges no just saying that to 
the fuck with that's the kid. That's most likely what happened. Yeah. yeah. Let's scare the shit out of the kid. And this could revenge. because that could have been a completely different cop, like a real hard ass and it really been a fucking bad situation. Look, so. I get it. Young people, kids do stupid <laughs> things. We all did stupid things when we were younger. Uh, maybe not to that degree, but the 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 whole idea that because you're doing it for stuff online makes it okay is a big problem because a lot of people get in trouble a lot of people get hurt people get killed from mm-hmm. stupid things like this but people did like stupid pranks like this and shit when we were kids it just they weren't taping it remember like there was that prank where people were stealing stop signs and then people got uh-huh. into collisions and died right like that shit happened like people in our school like that i knew would drive around in their cars not even videotaping just throwing shit out the windows at people like street cones and shit like that <laughs> we you know used to I mean? throw like, water balloons over the overpass yeah, like, onto the freeway not the realizing time. this could cause an accident yeah like people did so this yeah. shit all the time it just wasn't being taped you know yeah. like that. And well then, that's yeah, the biggest problem it's hashtag. being amplified out into a that's, larger audience. That's the thing. Yeah. Because now you're influencing. You want to be mm-hmm. influencers? You now are doing these stupid trends that are causing other people to do it. Now, uh, <laughs> it, it's not hard for a lawyer to build a case against you. It could not even be 100% factual that your video inspired other people who were doing these things, but that right. you also can't prove that it wasn't now. So it's causing doubt in the, in the legal process for your defense that you fucked up and you really don't have any kind of way to prevent it now because you put shit out online all the time. I used to tell this to like, um, you know, younger family members and stuff, you know, like deck, Jesus Christ, the 2000s was almost 20 years ago, um, where they would go out and they were drinking like in college stuff, but they put it up on their Facebook and I'd write to them like, take that down. Why? Who cares? But it's like, you're not 21. God forbid you get into an accident or you get charged with something or something happens. They look at your social media and they go, well, you're not credible Drink with, it. with your thing. Cause look at all these photos that you, you post here. If you constantly mm-hmm. out partying that gets used against you. And if you tell anybody that now, like this was 20 years ago, if you tell them that now they get so fucking offended, they get so um, there's such outrage built with them. Don't tell me what I can and can't post on there. I'll post whatever I want. I want to post. They're posting their whole life, and then when shit goes down, and they're like freaking out, it's like I can't. Why I'm, I can't handle this? My mental health isn't allowing me to to deal with this. Or why am I getting harassed? Because you did it to yourself. Yeah, you but put see, all this shit out old, there. Yeah, but now it's forty year old Southern men dumping out their Bud Light. So I mean. No, it all depends. Yeah, it goes for everybody. <laughs> everybody now. Everyone thinks that their entire life has to be documented and put on no. social media. It doesn't. No one gives a fuck about where you are on vacation, the food that you're eating, all that kind of other shit. People do it. Look, I'm guilty they of care posting. If you're a missing person. They're like, where is that guy? To post the Well, see, here's the thing, though. Like, I, I when Facebook was kind of in, in its infancy and everyone started doing stuff, I was I was just as bad. I go like, oh, yeah. going here, going on vacation, until I heard stories of, well, now people on your social media see that you're out of your house, and that's when your house gets broken into. And it yeah. freaked me out. So I I'm used like, to I'm hate never that, posting what that I'm not checking in shit that, that they would do on Facebook uh-huh. in, oh, the, yeah. in the late 2000s, or the other one where you became the mayor of something. Foursquare. Four Foursquare. Four Four that was a big thing, too. It's like, I'm at this tavern. I'm at this restaurant. I went, it's like, why no, do you need to check house. in? <laughs> well, I, sometimes if you do that, you know, if I'm here enough, they'll give me free appetizers or a free drink or something. Yeah, but like Jordan says, they're breaking into your house now at all times of day because they know Man you're not knows home. where to find you at three o'clock on a Tuesday. Getting <laughs> right, your coffee exactly. And Jamba juice. Yeah, it's like stop leaving breadcrumbs to track your life, and then these people. Not everybody, but most people will complain about, I'm not getting a chip put in me. I'm not doing this stuff here. Well, your phone's already tracking you unless you have certain settings off. That phone's tracking (laughs) you. Your GPS is tracking you. Anything that's not hardwired to something is tracking you Mm -hmm. wherever you go. So what are you going to allow? Like, What freedoms are you going to allow to be be, uh, squashed in the sake of convenience, right? The phone, GPS, that's what we're going to do. But I don't need to tag myself in photos with people to prove I was out of place. Because maybe I don't want to say that I was there. Maybe I like going to that place and I don't want other people showing up at that place. 
if you don't take the pictures, how do we get the black and white photo when somebody <laughs> or something dies at that location? That's oh, no. different. Disney that, died in Florida. I never tag where I was with a celebrity when you know at that time when they died. I just said, hey, I ran into this person once, and now yeah, because it's gonna be like Eric checking in, holding pillow over face. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> I want to say yeah, hi. To always, like if I'm gonna post pictures, it's always after I've gone to what place I've been to. Like, oh yeah, look, well, I'm I went home. here four weeks ago. Get away from my house. I want to say hi to a friend of mine who. Uh, plays the sea of thieves on uh on uh twitch that i'm a regular on their thing her name's uh keeping it twisted is her is her handle here and she's saying i had someone follow me to the gym because of foursquare right yeah it's dangerous and it's worse for i mean she's a woman this is worse for 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 you women out there when you're putting in your locations if you have stalkers or ex-boyfriends husbands whatever you know it's right. it's not as frequent to have a, a psycho ex-girlfriend or somebody stalking a guy as it is some psychotic guy or girl stalking a female that is more common than the other side but don't Absolutely tell them how i got george yeah don't hand it to them <laughs> and say hey look i might be at this place between the hours of four and six so you know i left right. the windows open because it's springtime and i want to air out my apartment oh cool now i know to go up the fire escape escape and i can go right into their apartment and sit there waiting for them yeah, stop posting your agenda. Stop posting no. everything. Stop stop showing George. No one cares about George. He's so upset. I care about George. Okay, Every everybody cares about George. I was going to say, my dog is black and white. They would get along. Your dog would eat that cat. <laughs> your dog is... I don't cat, know. This cat is the size of his dog. I don't know. I, I was going to say that. The, the cat his has dog is weight. a wolf in the desert. Figure that right. out. You have a husky in the in the in out in the desert. Right. Doesn't make sense. Uh, so anyway, stop posting your shit online. Stop doing these stupid challenges. Stop yeah, trolling stop people challenges. in that aspect. Like if you're if you're gonna do witty commentary or, or snarky remarks on the line, I mean that's one thing. But when you start bringing it into the real world, then you know, lady's gonna have epilepsy from that bucket thing. And now those kids are are going to once they are identified, they're going to get some fucking harsh punishments. I saw this prank video recently where this guy was walking down the street and they just stomped on this homeless man's cake. It was really fucked up. I know. And it keeps Wait, showing up on Reddit every couple Wait, months. You know? Every couple well, months. Why did he have And cake? you know, and then we all have to keep <laughs> voting it up so it shows on the front page. It's like, why do I have to do this? Can I, can I make a bot that will constantly <laughs> vote this video up so that I don't have to be inconvenienced by this? I'm more concerned about why that homeless man had a cake. Like, <laughs> like the, uh, cake he had a cake aside. because there was a place that was uh, it was it was like day or two old stuff where they were going to yeah, get rid of it. Got, so okay. they donated it to that homeless person so, up. so that he had food. <laughs> yeah, and then stomping but on the cake is cake. one thing, right? But then throwing money at him after the fact, which I don't know, uh, that might be on camera. I don't know where the money was just kind of thrown at him, like peeled off to. Oh, that makes it all good doesn't make it all good and you know for the time it was it was what it was shock jock radio but yeah. um yeah that didn't age well and uh it <laughs> continues to haunt the person that said individual who stomped on a homeless man's cake all right uh let us move on to some more fun things here as we are now going to do the consumer we have a lot Whoa, of stuff look at that background change i know you, right you didn't warn me about that uh, we got a bunch of new food products for scary, everybody yeah. to uh, know about, maybe even to try if they're in your area. Jordan, I think we need to start off with the big guns here first. We're going to do it? We're going to do that. Do you have right. it? I do. All right. Everybody, throw your throw it up in the air and wave it like you just don't care. We've got the Van Leeuwen's Hidden Valley Ranch Ice Cream. Gittles, where's your I ice don't. cream? They, they're, they're like two blocks from you. Why didn't you go get yeah, the ice cream? Yeah, they're two blocks from me. These are the flavors that they don't make two blocks from me. They make these in like some warehouse in Arizona. Oh, damn it. <laughs> I'll play must well, for everything. Anyway, so yes, Van Leeuwen. It's an ice cream company uh, out of Brooklyn, New York. That is, uh, I think, pretty much... You might find some flavors in your local supermarkets, but they pretty much have a, a deal with Walmart. So they're available all around the country. They put out specialty flavors. The last flavors... Uh, specialty flavors that we tried were the Idaho potato one that Gittles had. I had that one, Which yeah. was essentially um, recreating, like, like if, if you um, dip your french fries into a malt uh, shake or, or a frosty at Wendy's or something like that, is essentially like what that. this ice cream was. So it was, it was malt ice cream with the french fries already in there, which french fries are not known for being crisp much longer than coming out of the 
the right. fryer onto the plate. And they were like garlicky and like oniony. <clears throat> it was just kind of weird. Uh, imagine they did it with like truffle, they were like truffle fries. fries. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh, terrible. Well, no, I don't want to um, imagine that at so all. So we had That's that. Horrible. And then before that, in the uh, the beginning of the year, <laughs> we did the they did a crossover with Glass Onion, the Knives Out movie that came out on Netflix at the beginning of the year. And it was essentially French onion soup as an ice cream. Or caramelized onions as an ice cream, and it was god awful. Apparently, it's still spoon. available too. Yeah, like, I checked you can't the website. Buy it. Yeah, no I checked the website it. of the Van Lewins, like that you could go to, and the one in Los Angeles still has it as a flavor you can purchase. I'm like, oh. I can still taste that one spoonful <laughs> that I tried. Like, it is seared into my memory. Like, everything, like, oh, look at Eric's face. <laughs> Have right. you tried this yet, Jordan, or no? No, look at that. Look at the texture. Why it, is it green? Because of it's, ranch. It's, it's the dill. Why is ranch green? The dill. It's the, and, like, it's the, the ranch. dill. There's and no the dill in that. It's just green. It's, Hold on. Yeah, it's, you shouldn't be it's eating fungus. this. Read some of these ingredients here. Let's see. Ingredients? Oh yeah. It's it's, you know what it smells like? <laughs> like if you had a bowl of salad, right, and with ranch dressing, and then you put the <sighs> bowl next to the sink, and then the next and day you did it and washed it, and you smell that the ranch that was sitting out all night. That's what it smells like. So it's cream, milk, cane sugar, egg yolks, buttermilk powder, onion, uh, garlic powder, spices, sea salt, and, you know, all the... You know, to the consumer, just to be on par with you guys, I'm going to eat roach and ant tail. (laughs) I have this boric acid here. I'm just going to start doing lines of it. You're going to hashtag challenge that, too? Put that out online? It's the new Tide Pod (laughs) challenge. Okay, yeah, so it smells like ranch that had been sitting out the entire time. Um... Again, it's from Van Leeuwen, L-E-E-U-W-E-N. You can find it online. I think you can order it through the Walmart app. You can have it delivered if uh, your local Walmarts carry it. Oh, my God. Jordan's oh. camera froze at the right moment. Okay. There Did it go. freeze? It oh. froze for a second. It was You were holding it like, in your eyeball. Like Three, ice cream. Ice cream. Two, and I like Hidden one. Valley Ranch. I don't like Happy New Year. This smells terrible. It. It's, it's not a good smell. I could smell it from here. Eric likes it. No. Oh my god, no. Oh, it tastes It starts off Eric It tastes it. like it vanilla. Creamy. It ta- mm-hmm. yeah, it tastes like vanilla at first. And then it tastes like bad dip. <coughs> oh my oh. god. Now the real challenge is, is can you finish that pint before we end the show tonight? <sighs> You have to. That was part of the challenge. That's the Hidden Valley challenge. Oh this God. is part of the Hidden Valley Ranch <laughs> challenge. You have to eat a whole pint of Hashtag this. Hashtag eat the whole pint. I can't get it out of my mouth. Isolate that. <laughs> it's weird that <sighs> I taste. See, Jordan keeps going back. I think Jordan secretly likes it. He's just digging in. <laughs> You know what? Chips in it. You have to get. You have to build a tolerance. (sighs) What if you mix it with the potato ice cream? Will it taste like a potato chip with dip? I have seen people dip hot wings into this. Oh, it's still there. Yeah, Eric, you need to have at least two bites. Listen to Heather in chat. Two bites, Eric. I can't judge it from one. All right, I'm going to have to ban Heather at this point. (laughs) (laughs) Just kidding. Two Um, bites. You know what it tastes? It it also tastes like too. You know how they make the um, the Hidden Valley Ranch. As the packet with the seasoning, so you can mm-hmm. mix it with your own sour cream or buttermilk and make it your own way. Well, Jordan's got a fever. He's Take the thermometer. package of the ranch seasoning and just put it with vanilla, and and, and mm. do it that way. That's pretty much what that is. Oh, yeah, that's got a bad aftertaste. I kind of want to pull my teeth out. It's really which is not weird good. because like it starts off like where you taste just vanilla. It doesn't hit you right away, and you're like, okay, this isn't that bad, and and then it just lingers, and you're like, yeah, okay. When you first taste it, you're like. Okay, this isn't really anything. And then, and then it, it creeps you. up and then it it overpowers everything. <laughs> it is quite gross. <coughs> oh, man. All right, so the Van Leeuwen Hidden Valley Ranch ice cream. I'll put it up again on the screen for you to see right there. Wash, wash it down with a nice green hop. hop God awful and terrible. Do not it's- buy. It's not a, it's not a flavor you're gonna go back to often. All right, I have some other stuff that we can try. Jordan, do you have other stuff to try, Jordan? Do you have stuff? I, with I you? don't. I I, I, did I think try, I do in the other room. Give me one second. I did try not on camera, but we did have our snack show for our last show right. um, this past weekend, and we tried all kinds of stuff. I got the I don't know if you have it now. Did you get the Hidden Valley Ranch? If we're gonna be on the no, same I didn't topic. get the dill, the, dill. The, the spicy dill dressing yet. Has that, that arrived? Is, 
quite possibly the best ranch I've ever eaten. I it's on order. Nothing. It's being shipped. I have not received it yet. So maybe we'll Since do that Since Saturday, for next week. I, I have bought two more just to make sure I keep them on hand. Also and available at Walmart, constantly. right? That's where I found it. I don't know if it's going wide, but it is okay. definitely at Walmart. Uh, yeah. It's delicious. Hidden Valley has a spicy dill pickle version of their ranch dressing, which I, I ordered. Um, none of the stores near me had it, so I had to order it online. Um, we will. I'll definitely try that for next week. Now, I have a whole bunch of other stuff that we can try. We have um, <coughs> Pillsbury has new soft cookies. One is Lucky Charms. One is Cinnamon them. Toast Crunch. We have. I want to know your opinion because we just had them on our show as well. You so want you want to do that like. first? I've already eaten them, but you. I want to see what you said. I have the Dr Pepper Peeps. I have the Tapatio Doritos. I have the El Paso uh, Ranch Curls. I have the Slim Jim Spicy Dill Sticks. I have these. Um, what are, they're called? Froze Balls, Peanut Butter and Jelly. They have all these other different combinations. I've seen those in the co- the the checkout lanes. Yep. And I have all the new, the new variations of Reese's peanut butter cups. You got the, they, they got the crunchy. I need to find those. You got the creamy, Ooh. and you have the cereal crossover of Reese's Puffs. We've had those, yeah. So what about the one with pretzels in it? Those ones are good. Or the potato chip ones. I like the. I actually really like the potato chip one. Like yeah, me for too. some reason, whatever shellac they put onto the potato chip kept it crunchy I'm still on the inside. Yeah. This. I know it's gonna sit with you, and I don't have anything to rinse. I want to light my with. tongue on fire. This is terrible. <laughs> you just get these chocolates that taste like wish, a burned, blown up people. From I wish I had. The, I wish I had the vid again, so I lost my smell and taste. That's how oh, bad know, that, right? that ice cream is. Yeah, uh, what what should I go to next? You guys pick. I don't my, know. My, I want to know what you think about those cookies since I've actually cookies. had those this past weekend. All right, cookies it is. So which cookies is it? Pillsbury soft baked cookies have two new flavors. There is. Cinnamon Toast Crunch, which I imagine will be fantastic because anything Cinnamon Toast Crunch is, is usually is. This I'm concerned about. This one is Lucky Charms. And what uh, this seems to me, it seems like, you know how they make the raw cookie dough that you can get in the, um, I guess in the dairy aisles there, where you can take it home. It's already pre-squared. You put them on your trays. You bake them at home. Mm-hmm. They made a version of that with the Lucky Charm cereal already. These soft cookies look like it's still raw. Like it's like raw cookie dough that none of this stuff was ever cooked. And, and that's the biggest I, I problem I have with these kinds of cookies. That I'm not a soft baked cookie person. Like I'm fine with making cookies and they're nice and soft when you bake them. But these pre-packaged soft baked never taste right to me. I got one of those Pillsbury. It was like it was the birthday cake, and it came as like a breakfast bar, mm. and it was basically that. And um, it had this really weird, like almost like chemical plastic taste to it. Like it did not taste good at all. I threw out. The and that's my the problem. Box. It always tastes like chemicals. Yeah. yeah. So good luck, Eric. This smells <laughs> like two things. It smells like cookie dough, which was my concern because I'm not a big cookie dough fan. Like people love cookie dough ice cream or eating raw cookie dough. I don't really like that. Uh, it smells like that, but it what? also smells... No, I don't. I don't like cookie dough. Did you get um, cookie dough ice cream? I just said I don't like cookie dough ice cream, and I don't oh like raw God. cookie Wait, dough. Have you ever had the ice cream, though? But what about the ice cream that has the cookie dough in it? <laughs> Finally. Oh, Eric's gone. We have a real show. Sorry, we can I went to a show with people oh, God listen. Damn it, Sorry. Um, so, yeah, it smells like cookie dough, but it also smells like when you open up the Lucky Charms bag. Cereal. It's that That's chalky dumb. mushroom. Yeah. Uh, mushroom. Chalky marshmallow and uh, uh, whatever. You have whatever the other the dry part of chunky the cereal mushroom. is. I don't know what that technically oats. is. It's just oats and sugar. Oats and sugar corn. glaze. Um, problem it does I, smell like the marshmallows. The problem I, I, I have that too. with cookies like this. Um, and it's a big problem with like Chips Ahoy and their soft cookies. Ahoy. They're like the size of a half dollar. They really shrunk them down over the the last couple decades. Man. Um, Chips Ahoy has not been good since the eighties into the nineties. Like they changed the whole recipe, the preserves maybe. I don't know what it is, but they're just not the cookies that I remember. And it's not like oh, you were younger, you like that stuff. No, the, the the recipe has definitely changed. Also, the size has changed. Look how tiny these things are. They're very small. Look at that. Why is it so yellow? Cause I think it's the lighting. They don't look as oh, okay. yellow in person. Look at that. It's so. I mean, they're still pretty yellow. You're though. like flip. It's like the coin toss at a football game. Yeah, flip it, catch it in your mouth. 
Tell us what chemical Break tastes like. Break it open, like. and yeah, look, the marshmallows look like the the, the ones from the cereal. You can mm-hmm. even see that. Yeah, I just okay. People will love this. They will. I don't because I don't like marshmallows. But this tastes exactly like the cereal. I'm not. It smells like raw cookie dough, but it doesn't taste like raw cookie dough. It tastes a bit chalky, yeah. but the marshmallow flavoring is spot on from the cereal. So if you like the cereal, you'll love this. This is meant for you. This is not a me product, but I think they were a little too sweet, and I don't. I just. I yeah. really just don't like the chemical soft bake that these things do. Like my kids devoured the rest of them. Like they they were gone within seconds when I got them home, but. It, they're just not for me, and yeah, not. For I was gonna me. say between the two, I have a favorite, and I just I want to wait to eat the other one. Um, Sir Bob of Oliver <coughs> in the chat saying, "Don't like cookie dough is the most un-American thing you've ever said." Well, I'm sorry, <laughs> seriously, sir. I'm like shocked. Shocked. Sorry, sir, it's not for me, and it's I like can't. Hitler, the here. Taliban, Eric. Yep. Whatever. This is important. Now this one is the the cinnamon toast crunch one. I'm sure this is fine. Because anything usually cinnamon toast crunch is fantastic. Same size. Then they used to have three bakers. It smells like what Snickers. Happened to the other guy? Doesn't smell it like does. raw cookie dough. Yeah, smells well, because like that's this, like cinnamon toast crunch is basically like a Snickerdoodle cookie. Yeah, but is there cereal pieces in it? There's chunks of brown sugar and cinnamon, I guess. I was gonna say they look like cinnamons, like just chunks all throughout it. Yeah, it's a Snickerdoodle. Yeah. The that's thing that I would felt. set this apart is if it had the actual cereal pieces in it, like giving a little bit of a crunch in the soft bake would have been fantastic. Right. But this isn't now, terrible. I mean, it's it's fine. It's perfectly fine. Yeah. And, and they're both kind of the same way where it's like we're not the demographic anymore for these things. No, we're just not. I had these uh, after I brought them home. I took a couple and got them away from the kids and dipped it in milk. Those particular ones, the cinnamon ones, taste better with milk. Like, just dunk them a little bit. I just, I I don't know. They're just not for me. Like, they're just too sweet. I do have these, like, Fruity Pebble Rice Krispie (laughs) Treat bars that I bought, and they're really disgusting. So I I ate one, and I I left the box for the rest of the roommates (laughs) because it's so bad. Because they're, like, the size of, of like, a, a Rice Krispie Treat. Right, but it's not dense. It's like very airy, and it's just like it's just, it's a very weird texture. It's not yeah. good. Well, yeah, these aren't for us, um, but uh, we we know Heather. She has a child, and her kid says um, that Chips Ahoy soft bake tastes like pure oil. So like vegetable oil, weird. the hydrogenated oil. No petroleum, mm. like that you put in your car. <laughs> <laughs> this tastes like WD forty. This tastes like the Iraq War. <laughs> ah. Uh, Bartholomew saying, uh, I love soft bake. I absolutely hate a prepackaged soft bake that just tastes like all the preservatives they dump in. Yeah, the, the, f- and that's the what formulas that is. are terrible. Yeah. Soft bake cookies, if you can get them at a bakery or a, a cookie shop now, usually they're fantastic. Like a snickerdoodle is not a hard, solid, crunchy cookie. It's it's fantastic. I don't like, we've talked in the past, those milk bar cookies. Their, their product in oh, the store is so terrible, bad. and I don't even like the ones in their regular store where they're making it. It always tastes like it's unfinished, like they didn't finish cooking them. I was going to say, you didn't, like the, the, you didn't like the crumble cookies either. When you were in Chicago, you ended up trying crumble. Yeah, went to crumble because like I heard those. it was a big deal, and um, they're they're big. They're like big-sized cookies. You get like we a have half dozen, here. right? And yeah, not not a fan of those either. And then yeah, I, I also didn't like you voodoo donuts like, when I was on the West Coast. Uh, not in West Coast, when I was in Austin, Texas. Come to my shop voodoo. and get one of our lard, don- our lard cookies. You'd love that's, them. They're so fucking good. That's actually funny. Today, an article got posted locally here. We're actually getting a voodoo donuts in Tempe. Oh, I'm belching up the ice cream. <laughs> it's going to sit. You don't like voodoo man. donuts either, Eric? I, I thought it was overrated. Like, they <laughs> weren't terrible, but I did, I never had it. So I, I didn't judge. think they were. They, they, they were monstrosities. You know, like all they the are. Captain Crunch on top of this. And then when I had went, Prince had died. So every other do- uh, donut I was had purple. had him on it. Yeah, oh. that t- yeah, well, they did. Which they had is? those cookies with they, where they do the light imaging on it i forget yeah. that, what that technique's called um they do it for like birthday cakes stuff where they can scan oh, yeah, the images yeah. onto it but they had cookies with prints on it but a lot of all the other ones the regular ones they made purple the jelly donuts all had grape jelly in it for this time around though so um i tried a, a couple of their donuts and i wasn't a fan not saying they're terrible the t- but i think it was overrated i went to the two original locations in portland mm-hmm. last summer and yeah that it was good but it wasn't like i need to go out of my way to go get it 
Like you can find this same stuff now almost everywhere. Everyone's got their own little yeah. weird donuts and cereal everywhere. And it's just it gets to a point where it's just too much. Yeah. Give me a good just like glazed or a maple bar. Frankie Bronson, you know you're deep into the food game when you lie in your reviews. I never lie in my reviews. If you go to the consumer on Instagram, follow that account so you can see the other uh, reviews that I do. Um, most of them are me just telling everybody how terrible the products are and then tagging those companies in it. Like, I'm not in it to get the free product. I'm not in it to get any kind of perks or, or curry anyone's favor. I tell you flat out, and I get a lot of comments and we think, why are you doing this? If you hate everything, why do you keep posting this stuff? It's like, because I need to tell people that these are terrible products. Oh, the, yeah. like The idea of show- them seems fantastic, but more times than not, they're, they're, they're awful. Yeah, there's times when we're doing our show, like, I hate half the things we eat. And then you get real sick because you're eating all this crap. But you, you um, can't we actually have shit. You do one for a taste, and then that's it. I give them away to, to neighbors and stuff. I can't eat this stuff. Yeah, the same way. I bring stuff for the kids. I was like, you eat it. I don't want it. We're doing, uh, and the next snack show about three weeks from now, we actually have, we shipped them in from the UK. We have the Burger King Whopper flavored Doritos. Right. So those should be Ooh. disgusting. Whopper fra- flavored Doritos? Mm-hmm. So they're Burger King Whopper yeah. flavored Doritos. Doritos did a thing many years ago. They had a mystery bag. It was a black bag with like re- like soft red and blue neon writing yeah. mm-hmm. on it. And they didn't tell you what it was. It was a mystery flavor. And it turned out to be McDonald's <laughs> cheeseburger. And they yeah, were really that. good. Like at the time you're eating, it's like this tastes like a cheeseburger. But when they revealed what it was, they were fantastic, and they they, they didn't keep them. Uh, my favorite the cheese curls you sent me, the cheeseburger one. Those were great. those aren't discontinued though. Those apparently are seasonal because I haven't right. found them uh, again. But when those I do, uh, in- the hers cheeseburger flavored um, cheese doodles, and these are almost gone. They're so the good. jalapeno pretzels. Yeah, I'm looking for another did, bag. You ate, did you eat these yourself? Like you got yourself a bag? No, right? I didn't eat those. These have a spice. Like they're actually spicy. Like they're they're perfectly spiced. Where it's like a lot of heat right away, and then it's just good flavor, and they're just perfect pretzels. These are great. Yeah, I just yes, finished. I'll the sell bag my soul to, to send a bag of these. these Uncle Jerry's dark, <laughs> extra dark pretzels are the fucking best. See, that's where we're going to be fun. We're like, we'll do this where we all have these like mainstream things, Pillsbury things, and then Gittles is going to do the dollar store and like our this is seasonal this is Pennsylvania, like small batch. This is Pennsylvania batch Dutch. Stuff. Yeah, this is Pennsylvania. This shit's so good. Yeah, <laughs> They're all burned. Like you eat them and your teeth are black. Like you got like that hobo costume for Halloween and you got like that teeth paint. This you know, tastes this like shit. burning. Yeah, yeah, it does. It tastes like burn. It's great. I love burned food. Ah. Uh. All right, uh, what else should Delicious. I go to next here? Do we want to do the Tapatio Doritos, the El Paso Fiesta Ranch Twists? Uh, I feel I, actually, I, I think had I had the, enough ranch for this week, so I'm going to skip those. I think you've had a lot of ranch. I was going to say I actually kind of want to see how those the dill uh, Slim Jim is. Oh, Slim Jim. I've I've had those too. So I mean, I have the twists and I've had those, so I I know what those taste. So uh, yeah, so Slim Jim put out uh, have partnered with Vlasic Pickles. And they've put out. Oh, so it's a name brand. It's the Vlasic Dill Pickle Slim Jim Sticks. Because to me, Slim Jims are oily. Like it's a weird. They're oily very meat. greasy. Yeah, they're very yeah. greasy. Yeah. So this is going to be either really you good just or peel really the top. Bad. Why are you biting it like that? It smells exactly like the 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 juice in the in the jar. It smells like a Vlasic. Yeah. Yeah, it's spot on. It smells. I hope exactly Eric like bites it and then spins around. And he gets the long hair. And he's like, he turns into that Slim Jim guy. <laughs> Randy Savage, X. the guy, the Static X guy from the it's the old Slim Jim. Wayne Static. Remember the guy from the, guy's the dead. <laughs> oh no, the guy who had the long the thing from the snap to a Slim Jim. Oh, when they stopped using Randy Savage, they yeah. did they did that. The oh, guy okay. with the claymation hair. He oh, looked he looked okay. like Jimmy oh, Neutron great. almost. Yeah. It smells very pickly. Mm, pickly. I've had pickle jerky before and it was fucking gross, so I don't know how this is going to be. I was just telling Eric that the dill pickle ranch is really, really good. So that's why that's probably good. Wanted. Their it's Tabasco so good. flavor uh, is really bad. I don't like it. Mm. But I don't like the flavor of Tabasco. I like hot sauce, but I just don't like Tabasco. This I'm isn't on the bad. lookout. Really? This isn't bad. If you huh. like Vlasic pickles, or if you like pickles <laughs> in general. But is it Vlasic in like the brand? Yeah, it's Vlasic okay. on the label. Yeah, it, cool. it tastes exactly like the 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 pickle juice from Vlasic pickles. I'm amazed they it's not dyed that neon green color that they do for the pickles. But uh, this isn't bad. It's it's got a bit of spicy after taste to it. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't say no to this. Like I wouldn't eat 
two of these <laughs> but yeah slim jim <laughs> slim jim bad. is weird because some of their specialty flavors are weird like they have a sonic um the the food chain they did a um chili cheese dog flavored slim jim that was really gross mm -hmm. i didn't like that and then they did a collaboration with takis and i didn't like the flavor of that takis are their taki flavors can be weird sometimes mm -hmm. so just to, to think that that was actually good is kind of surprising now this isn't bad it. i'd recommend this this was this i try was pretty it good yeah so look for the uh the vlasic dill pickle slim jim sticks in a convenience store near you um maybe we do one more and save the rest for next week do dr pepper peeps top tier doritos any of the racist stuff want to try the racist stuff you want to take a look at those I mean, I I just want to eat those. I don't want to see you. Eat I was gonna them. say, I want, yeah, I want like to I, I still need to find them myself. Okay, forget that. I am on yeah, the find lookout. Find that I don't have. The frozen balls. I am balls. on the lookout for the uh, the spaghettios red hot. Yeah, Apparently I was looking for them too, thing. but I think they're just starting to roll out. So probably after Easter, we'll see them on the shelves. I'll try to um, find those. Yeah, I do have so, a bag of volcano hot chicken noodle. It's crazy hot. <laughs> um, the uh, so hot. The it, is it Campbell that does spaghettios, right? I believe so. Campbell has a new version of their original spaghettios where the sauce in there is mixed with uh, Frank's Red, Frank's Hot. Red Hot. And the reason why they were doing now this this is where I knew it wasn't just a gimmick that this was a real PR push. The news stations in New York were actually covering this, and not just like as a little you know fluff piece. It was on like ten ten wins, it, you know the the, the big news right. AM station. Um, they're talking about this, and they're, they're finding that because the younger generation, <laughs> like millennial and Gen Z, love those flaming hot everything, and mm -hmm. they love Frank's Red Hot. They put it on everything. It's not even Tabasco. They're using Frank's Red Hot for this stuff. So. It just seemed like a no-brainer based on their research that the the demographic that they're catering to is going to like this. So it's a, it's a supposed to be an adult version of SpaghettiOs, but like you're not going to give these to a, a kid under 10 unless they really like hot spicy stuff, but yeah. Um yeah, as soon as that comes in, we'll try that. So what what else what are we finishing here? Which one are we doing? It's uh, I thought you said the Tapatio ones. Or was that I was gonna say tapatios? when this show comes out, it'll be Good Friday. We're going into Easter weekend. You can go with the Peeps. That's a that's a nice yeah, that Easter sense. brand. All right. So uh, I feel Tapatio is just gonna be Tapatio. Yeah, it's just gonna because I've had the Tapatio hot fries and they're great, but it they're just great. tastes like Tapatio on stuff. Okay. Right. All right. We'll save it for next week then. Is it Tapatio or is it Tapatio? <clears throat> tapatio. 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 All right. So we're doing the Peeps then. The Dr. Pepper Peeps? I would think Dr. so. Dr. Pepper Pecks. Doc Since oh. you love marshmallow so much. Of pickled Slim Jims. There we go. <laughs> that should Dr. go well Pepper with the pickled Pepper Slim Pepper Jim Pepper and the ranch ice cream. Yeah, You're I, really I, going I, across I, the board here. I do hate marshmallows, but... Uh, I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan anymore either. I used to love them as kids, but... You know so what it now. smells like? It smells... Remember when they had a Dr. Pepper gum? They made A and W root beer gum. They made Dr Pepper gum. Well, didn't they have like the the? They had the a Seven Up and an inside? orange slice or an orange crush gum too. They made soda those. gums. Yeah, those were good. Yeah, it was the gum that had the fluid on the inside, like a Gushers, but it was before Gushers were a thing. Um, it was gum that had the the gel inside, so when you were eating it, it tastes like you were having soda with the bubble gum. Uh, that's right. what it smells like, and it, it, it's in the vein of Dr Pepper. So. Ugh, look at look at this fucking terribleness. Just, <laughs> as you rip it apart. Ugh. You, you know who really, really fight, loved those fight. and ate half of it? The my dog? daughter. Oh. No, my daughter. She devoured almost that entire package. Okay. Eric, 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 dip it in the ranch. <laughs> <laughs> Do it in the ice cream. <laughs> oh man. Sorry. That would be so bad. Um, it's okay. It's very weak, very mm -hmm. weak tasting. Like the marshmallow, yeah, sugar. Marshmallow is a very distinct taste, and it's overpowering the the Dr Pepper. 
Like you bite I into it. The peeps, the peeps flavors, I think is actually just the coating on the outside. Right. Cause I think I, yeah. cause every time I've had one, like the second you get into like the marshmallow, the flavor is all gone. But if you like taste mm-hmm. the outside, yeah. Like how it's got that outside, like that. It's Cause they got that sugar, the sugar crystals. Yeah. So they, they, they rely on that. I mean, they color it. So and they're they, probably just it. making all the peeps and then just spraying them with a different sugar coating. Yeah. Just one vat of all just the marshmallows. Cause I've had. Oh my god, are you really gonna do that? He asked. Oh. So. Oh, so what? <laughs> like, don't smell it. Oh. Oh no! You gotta eat. Ah. For those of you listening, uh, Eric immediately got the ranch ice cream flavored peep onto his tongue and immediately. <laughs> Almost. Vomit. Oh, he did it. He, he did dip it, did he? Yeah, he dipped it, and he Wait, is he had a peep spitting with... it out. This is disgusting. I don't even want to watch this. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to watch this. Ooh, that's oh. a challenge you put on fucking TikTok. <laughs> the the Dr the... Pepper Peach cool Ranch puke. Ice Cream Challenge. Yeah, Cool Hand Puke is now the episode of the title for uh, oh. title of the episode. I can't even talk. <laughs> this was so. <laughs> This is so. <laughs> oh, that is. I can't believe you dipped that in there. Eric's brain's in a different atmosphere right now. Oh, cool ham puke over here. Are you try- I thought you were going to put the tape on your tongue to get the flavor. Oh, I am. <laughs> like, why? I don't think tape works that way, Eric. It does <laughs> if you dry your tongue out. So much saliva. You can see your taste This is buds. very intriguing. To this me. is like I'm just. I, I'm I, not I gonna never, lie. I feel like an anthropologist right here watching a monkey in the woods with a tool. Like, just, get this taste using out of my mouth. The just time. using the leaves to scrape the the dirt taste out of his mouth. Yeah, I just. As I, you see, I've the, never the seen Eric anyone use tape, tape that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, We've experienced something here. I don't like it. Of, uh, <laughs> He's still going. You can use it all it's like heavy duty. At least use this. This is like all weather gorilla tape. Like you can't rip this apart if it gets on you. Uh, this is the kind you got to do use. that. And you, you pull skin off. <laughs> oh, good God, Eric! You're leaving crime scene evidence everywhere. It's like a, it's, like, it's like an industrial sized Biore strip. <laughs> well, anyway. Oh, that was gross. That was there the most go. horrific like minute and a half I've ever had on this show in like the ten years that I've been on this show. More, it's Eric Nagel. It's Eric Nagel. Next, it's Eric Nagel. Follow the show on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, and Facebook at It's Eric Nagel. Hey, this is Seth Rogen. You're listening to It's Eric Nagel. It's Eric Nagel. Eric Nagel. Segment two, everybody. So we uh, talk about television, movie, streaming updates. We watch all this stuff and let you know about it so that you do not have to uh, because there's just too much going on and you need to know about the important things so you can mark your calendar accordingly. Uh, What do we got here? Uh, MCU news happened right after we finished the show last week, so we didn't get to to it. Um, June 21st. On Disney Plus, Secret Invasion, six episodes, the return of Nick Fury to the MCU. It stars um, Samuel L. Jackson predominantly through the entire series. There's a lot of stuff they didn't show in the trailer. Um, I have some thoughts of who's showing up, but we don't know. Who's the guy that was in the freezer that they cut off the the scene before revealing? Who's the guy's head in the shadow walking into the room? Um, It looks like Chris Evans. I'm just going to say that. It looks like it's a Captain America kind of thing. So... Who knows? I was going to say, I think we spent a good 45 minutes after the trailer dropped just talking about what we think might be happening. Right. So, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be interesting. It looks fun. It's 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 very in the vein of like um, Civil War, um, Winter Soldier, kind of like that espionage, you know, who's doing what. I can't look at Eric's face like he looks so upset right now. Oh, it's <laughs> so all right. I'm trying. It's so all right. Hard. I'm trying to figure out how to remove my jaw. Like, I just want it to go away. <laughs> um, all right. So. <clears throat> Yeah, so that's uh, the latest for the MCU. Uh, May 5th. Is it the 5th? Yeah, May 5th. Guardians of the Galaxy. Cinco de Mayo. Guard- mm. That too. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is coming out. Tickets are available. They went on sale earlier this week. And this leads to my problem now. When we talked about this 
two months ago when they announced it, and now it's finally taking place. AMC is doing streamlined seating prices. So essentially, mm. is if you want to sit in a good seat, they're charging you more for sitting uh, in the middle that. of the theater or the middle of the aisle. Um, you actually have to pay $2 more per seat if you're in a certain section of the theater. If you're sitting on the edge of the aisles there, it's, it's fine. If you sit down at that um, lower area that's not the stadium seating, it's actually $2 less. They want everybody sitting in the front. If you're a cheapskate, you're going to be sitting at the front of the screen looking up. Uh, it's fucking ridiculous. I bought my tickets for May 5th. I got it for the uh, for the Guardians movie. Um, yeah, I, even with the, the reward discounts and everything else from being a premier member and all that stuff with AMC, still um, came to $20 for the ticket and the the beverage to go along with it. So, um, yeah, quite expensive to go to the movies. And this is really fucking stupid to do this now. I know they're trying to make up all the money that they lost during the pandemic. But when people are not going to the movies as often, now you're getting you know, box office records for opening weekend, but then the second weekend, there's such, and it doesn't matter what the, the title is now that's going out, there's such a dramatic drop-off for mm-hmm. the second weekend that people aren't, like it's rare now if a movie, like Top Gun was doing it over during the summer, but it didn't have a whole lot of competition. So I think it was like seven weeks it was at the top of the box office. Oh, yeah. It did fantastic. But now... You have the uh, you had Ant Man that was number one for two weekends and then dropped. Um, you had John Wick, which was number one for one weekend and then dropped. It's still doing well, but it's not in the top of the box office anymore. We're not seeing those runs anymore, where movies are lasting a few weeks of being number one movie in America. It's moving that fast, so fast. And we'll get back to the AMC. Um, remember uh, the C- the second uh, Shazam came out. Shazam, uh, Shazam, Fury of the Gods, now with Shaquille O'Neal in it, um, <laughs> is now available now on digital. You can go to MVP. iTunes and watch it. No, they don't make the physical media anymore. We tried, but they just don't do it anymore. It's already available, and it's been out, what, three weeks? And it's already uh, it available home. March 14th, and it's not even out a full month um, until it became digital. And it'll release at the end of April, I think. Um, yeah, Warner April, Brothers but, just yeah. said, you know what, fuck it. We're not going to get back into the top of the box office uh, with this movie, so let's just uh, we'll let it run, but we'll throw it up on, on digital right now and try to make all the money that we can before people stop caring about it even more. But anyway, back to AMC. Uh, Yeah, so now if you go to buy, and it doesn't matter if it's IMAX, if it's the Dolby Sound, if it's the one with the lasers that they're promoting, um, that whole middle section now is extra money to sit in the seats that you normally would sit in. And it's not like you run to the theater anymore to hopefully to get good seats. Everything is uh, picked. You you get assigned seating uh, beforehand with your ticket. So it's two extra bucks plus all these other fees and stuff. If you didn't have, if I didn't use the uh, the rewards points that I had for the uh, for the ticket, the ticket alone was sixteen something. Jesus, for, for that seat, not including the service fees, the taxes, everything else, you would have been about twenty one dollars to go see a movie for one adult ticket with with everything that was on there. Um, this is the worst idea that they could do. This is the same shit that they do for concerts. When you're going to a stadium, it's like, well, if you get the seats over here, it's you know, prime viewing for the stage, so you're going to pay a couple hundred dollars more. But if you sit over there, yeah, it's uh, you know, it's about a hundred dollars less, but there's obstructions. You may you may not see the entire stage. So what do you do? You pay what you can afford if you don't have enough money to to shell out for all this stuff. Now, granted, this is on a v- a very lower scale financially. But still, that could mean a big deal to if you've got a family of four that's going to go to the movies or if you've got kids or something. The Super Mario Brothers movie is out right now. It, it just came yeah. out. And it's uh, the kids are off uh, this week and next week for spring break around the Easter and Passover holidays. You're going to go take them to the movies. Now you're going to think about it. It's like, well, I got three kids that are home and I'm going to go take them to the movies. I'm paying two extra dollars on top of my tickets to take the kids to go see a movie. It's not very cost effective for a lot of people anymore. So they're trying to do this to salvage what they can. But is this making is this going to tank them in the, in the long run or even the short and, term? And they rolled it out in some markets. And in, for you, they just rolled it out recently. You went and saw John Wick and this wasn't the case. And literally a week and a half later, you're buying tickets for Mario. And, you know, we're talking Sunday night and you're just finding out that this is now a thing. And 
I, Honestly, I don't know how wide that this is going to be or how well this is going to be received. I wish AMC that was, right the, now deal. was the only one. I wish that was the deal when I went and saw John Wick 4 because someone brought a fucking five-year-old to the theater and he was sitting right in front of me and he wouldn't <laughs> shut the whole goddamn movie and I was going to throw that kid through the screen like John freaking Wick. Anyway. Well, and then it comes down to, and, and me and Eric were talking about this, where it, the ticket prices are set by the, the studios. That's why, like I said, Disney won't allow passes for the first couple weeks of their movies. It, they they can control that kind of stuff. So how does surge pricing or, you know, location pricing affect that? They can't tell AMC to do it or not do it. Like, how is what are they what's their input when it comes to AMC charging more for like the middle seats? Is AMC skimming off the top at that point? I don't know. I don't know. So, There's a, I don't you, know. Can, you can go look at the initial article that came out uh, towards the beginning of February from, uh, I think it was on Variety. You can go and look at the article and they were breaking down what they were doing. And they only started it in three markets. It was New York City, Chicago, and I think Kansas City because AMC is based out of Kansas City. And that that's where they were trying. They said, then it's going to roll out to the country later. And you're like, okay, so you think they would make announcements. Hey, starting this date, it's going to start rolling out so people had a heads up. The week before, I went to see John Wick. didn't have that price. Got the ticket for Super Mario Brothers, and there was the the extra fees for the seat. So mm-hmm. it was within a matter of a week, all of a sudden, you're paying way more for the same seat that I paid for the previous week. Um, yeah, I don't know what this is going to do. I think this is a really piss poor i i understand that the, every company's hemorrhaging money right now but i think this is a piss poor cash grab at the worst it's time just, it's just it's just a cash grab like that's all it is it's Which stupid is weird because it's, it's dumb the, it's the company that was almost going to go completely bankrupt until millennials got a hold of stocks and got them back in the in the in, in the red or the black or whatever you know what i mean well, like, yeah they're probably just trying to make as much money so that they can stay up there once all the millennials they're just like let's get rid of this shit <laughs> You know, because we, we everyone bailed out GameStop and AMC, and then now AMC's like, well, thanks for helping out. You have to pay more. Yeah. Like, all right. Thanks. Well, thanks, dicks. Uh, let's see. Uh, our pal Chris, subdivisions in the chat there. Rumor is Eric is going to buy LucasArts from Disney. I'm just buying the game division because I will bring back Indiana Jones. I will bring back <laughs> Secret of Monkey Island, and I will bring back my, my favorite, one of my favorite games of all time, Zach McCracken in the Alien Mindbenders. That was a LucasArts so game. I know. It was oh. either LucasArts or Sierra. Those were like my two computers. I was just going to say Sierra. Like, like who owns money. Sierra now? It's all the Sierra was the, all the Leisure Suit Larry games. You remember King's those games Quest. where everybody thought they were pornographic and they were trying to buy the game and it turned out it was just, oh it was God, they were slightly just suggestive <laughs> and really terrible, bad jokes. Um, yeah, I would be interested in buying Sierra games. I'd, I would love to own the Leisure Suit Larry franchise. Why not? Just to say that you had the rights to it. So, we had that guy on the show. Yeah, Al Lowe. We had yeah, uh, awesome. the creator of that. He was on, uh, I think, the first year we were doing the show over at Satellite. All right. Well, we'll see what AMC uh, happens to AMC in, in the long run here. Uh, moving on, we talked about Shazam is already out on digital. Super Mario Brothers out now in theaters. Uh, apparently, this is the big thing now. Collective tankards and uh, mugs and, and containers for the popcorn because people were going nuts for the D&D movie that was out for the stuff that AMC had put out there that made it look like a 12-sided die. I, I don't know what. 20-sided 20 20-sided die. 20-sided die. Whatever. <laughs> stupid shit. But uh, people were trying going crazy <laughs> for it. They were buying the containers with that. And like, you know, it comes with the drinks and the popcorns. And I saw people waving it off like, no, I don't need that. They were just buying the the, uh, the, the tankards and they were buying the um, the the dice containers to to bring home. Well, well, yeah, because that's what, you know what they want that popcorn container because every person who plays D and D has like five hundred dice. And right. They don't want popcorn in because they don't want grease in it because you don't want you get your nerds like you know shiny math rocks dirty. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You don't want to like <laughs> fuck that up. Well, they had uh, the uh, the coin block for Super Mario Brothers and I wound up buying it so. I'm no different. I don't care about the DVD Oh, you ended shit, up buying the, it. Okay. Yeah. They had it there. It was weird. They had them at the end of the movie. And I went early. You know, it was a it was a midday thing. That's probably and, why. And they had it. There was people standing at the end of the, you know, when you were coming out of the theater, when you're walking out there, and they had them for sale. Like, hey, if you want to buy this here, they you tap you um, tap your ca- uh, your card to the machine, and there, there you go. You walk off with this. So, yeah, people were buying uh, the containers. I, I bought one. I'm, I put figures in it sitting over there. So, 
of course I did. Uh, but anyway, the Super Mario Brothers movie's out. I went and saw it. It's actually really good. If you grew up with the video game like I did, like we all did uh, in the 80s, going into the 90s, and still today, it's a powerhouse for Nintendo. Uh, it's, a, it's an amazing franchise. Um, do want to tell you that there is, when the movie ends, there's animated credits. Then there's a mid credit scene. Okay. Then there's the regular black and white credits. And then there's a scene after that. So not spoiling so anything, but there's a mid a mid credits and final credit post credits uh, scenes for the movie. That okay, seems to be. I'm going to go see it after we're done here tonight. So I'm gonna that go seems check to that be the thing everybody's it. doing. That Marvel put that in play, and now everybody's just doing that too because now that it's expected that there's credit scenes for little extra teasers and stuff. Uh, also, we'll say Jack Black as Bowser and Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong. Not annoying. <laughs> I was pleasantly surprised. I thought it was going to be annoying with them in there, and it was not. Yeah, so, I was going to say Seth Rogen is very polarizing. Like, I he's I good in some like things, him. and he's not good in others. Like, he can well, take you out was, of a project, and you know that you want to I, enjoy with him. And I like, I, like I uh, we've had him on I the feel show. Like I want to hang times. out with he's him. Nice. I don't want to see him in things. <laughs> yeah, he's a nice guy. I I don't want to <laughs> shit on the guy, but. Um, like sometimes his performances in, in certain things are just not that great. Like he takes you out of the movie because you're like, oh, this is Seth Rogen in the in this movie. But right. as far as the animated, the casting was fine. Anybody who's having a fucking problem with Chris Pratt because of his religious shit and all. Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt. Yes, like a deep fried rat. Chris Pratt. <laughs> That could have been the show title had we not gotten the other one. The Cool Hand Puke, I think, is still winning it. Um, he's fine. The, him and Charlie Day as uh, Mario and Luigi, perfectly fine. They work yeah, out I'm great. Excited. There's a lot of uh, surprise cameos in there. There's a lot of Easter egg stuff. So look at the walls. Look at the, the rooms that Just they're the in. Time for this weekend. And uh, yes, exactly. Look, um, look around and you'll start seeing a lot of stuff. You're like, oh, my God, I can't believe they included this. And I think they allude to some other things coming in the future. Not directly, but I think they they made some kind of off comment, uh, off handed comments that uh, that uh, like, oh, that could be something else down the line. Uh, Healer from Kentucky saying uh, John Leguizamo was bitching about uh, Chris Pratt. John Leguizamo can go fuck himself because he has been constantly shitting on this movie. He's like, I can't believe they're going backwards. There's no Latino rep. Oh, no, he's a Latin X. He's one of those assholes that bought Latinx, into that white you know. nonsense, that white people nonsense of <laughs> Latinx. And I, yes, it's white people nonsense because I've asked a lot of of Spanish people, Latino people. All the, I'm like, do you prefer How to you? use that? And they like, no, they don't like it. It's like this is shit. Know, white weird. people made up. And I go, I know, oh I know really? Who say that. The what? Whatever. I said I know. I know Spanish people who say that, but I guess we just know different people. What that they like the Latin la, Latinx. Yeah. No, yes. the ones I had, they all are like, no, this is stupid shit you guys made up. And I said, yeah, oh, the problem okay. with Latinx is that it takes place in space and no one liked that. one. I know. It's like and how many just, like banging them against the tree on the, <laughs> the first nine Latin movies were terrible. And now we're yeah. up to the 10th one. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, but yeah, John Lang was almost Latin complaining. He's like, it's like they were making progress and now they're going backwards by not having you no know, Latin representation. In the... You are a Latin guy pretending to be Italian. They're Italian they... characters. Does she not? Does he not know that the girl who plays Princess Peach is actually from Argentina? Like yeah. Oh, the, the girl from uh, from Queen's Gambit. Yeah. Um, the, 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 she's like Spanish. So yeah. Yeah. I can't. What's Anna her? It's Joy something Joy, Taylor. right? Amanda Taylor Joy. Anna Taylor Joy. Anna Taylor Joy. She's perfectly fine. I mean, mm -hmm. she's fantastic as, as Peach in there. She like nothing. Nobody's voice takes you out of the movie. Like even though I think you, Charlie you Day know, Luigi is a great cast. He is. Because he goes between being regular Luigi and then there's Haunted Mansion. It, it's it. nothing that's Spoiler. spoiling it. No, it, it was in the trailer a you tiny bit. You just spoiled it. Where he, the there's Haunted Mansion <laughs> vocal This is Luigi. why I don't see the trailers, Eric. Because you also don't watch anything current, so it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> I'm caught up on Yellow Jackets for you. That's Damn. fair point. All right, one yeah, out of a exactly. thousand. Yes. Oh, <laughs> one. Bow, 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 bow. Hold on, I got my air horn here. Bow, bow, bow. <laughs> <laughs> we'll add it in post. It's a um, yeah, movie's f fine. John Leguizamo can go eat a bag of dicks. Um, he's complaining about the stuff. And it's like, it's because you weren't good. He said a lot of people come up and say they love that movie. There's a lot of nostalgia. No, there's a lot of nostalgia for that movie because of how it terrible it was. A lot of nostalgia of the for the, the, the Super Mario property. 
But it's nobody loves that movie. People may love to goof on that movie and hate that movie, but nobody loved that movie. He's lying and he's mad because he wasn't. He thought he was going to just be kind of uh, just included to recreate the character and nobody wanted him because he's fucking terrible. And I also haven't forgiven him for doing those stupid easy pass ads here in New York when they said, oh, they're getting, <laughs> rid, of, see, they're getting now, rid of cash tolls and now, now you have to have see. it or you're going to pay all these fees. It's like, oh, let's let's advertise for racketeering, John Leguizamo. Sell out, whatever. I wish to sell out. I'm sure he made a good uh, <laughs> a good amount of money for doing those commercials. It I all comes back to myself. easy pass with that. Yeah, fuck all easy pass. Easy but pass. also, like, he's been shitting on this movie forever and it, it go, get over it. Nobody wants you. Nobody, you're not good in anything anymore. How House of Buggin was meh at best. It was a living in living color ripoff. No one fucking cares. You were terrible. No, no, no. You not. You were terrible in the menu. You are who you are is your character in the menu. That's who he is. That he asshole is. that he portrayed in the menu is who he really is. Which is funny. He came out and said that he modeled that character after himself. Um, Thank you for yeah. admitting it, Jordan. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. No. What? That's right. You're right. All right. Moving on. Also out yeah, now in, in the theaters, like, uh, yeah. that <laughs> Nike movie, Air, is now in theaters where they t uh, tell you about because Nike was not doing well in the early 80s. Like they were about to go bankrupt. They weren't uh, doing well as a company until they made that deal with Michael Jordan and started figuring out instead of uh, trying to endorse the league, let's have a per endorse a person. And it shows right. you that whole development of where, how the company uh, turned it around and became you know the global juggernaut that it is and i've heard really good things i know two people who've, who've gone to see screenings of the movie already and said it's fantastic it's directed and also stars ben affleck matt damon's in it jason bateman viola davis and chris tucker i didn't know there. about chris tucker yeah so i, I uh, i'm looking forward to go see this movie as well <laughs> uh news from warner brothers Oof. you never know day to day it's like oh are we can we you know, shutting down these movies too? Are we canceling these properties? Or no, no, we're we're still going with Blue Beetle. Okay, fine, we're doing that. Blue Beetle's coming out. When's the date on that? Do you have that? Uh, I have it on the sheet. It's a see. DC it's... superhero movie. It's an unknown. Like it's known to, to comic book nerds, but for the mass August public, 18th. it's very unknown. August eighteenth. I 18th. was told. I was told there it's DC's version. Like the character's very Deadpoolish. Like he's very fourth wall. Very okay. Snipe, you know, quippy, and he's he's uh, Latinx, as the kids say, apparently. In space. <laughs> um. So there's that. Also from Warner Brothers, complain. They've announced that there's <laughs> going to be a live action Minecraft movie based on this amazingly popular video game series, starring Jason Momoa. We don't know what character he is. It comes out April fourth, twenty twenty four. He's just a square or twenty five square. But that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, so is everything shot in like is everybody just going to look like the Minecraft characters? Because it character looks like Lego. Steve. Yeah, it's just well, blocks. It's Lego well, without it the little little caps on it that make lego lego it's just the squares like ooh, he's got a pickaxe so Run. how are they going to do a live is yeah, it doesn't make do any like sense they did with cats where that was live action but everything was cgi i think it's going to be something like that where they're going to be just, there but then they're going to be like block people like they're just, probably got to wear like green screen like block costume <laughs> and like walk around like stupid he's going to walk people. around looking like awesomeo from south park is just eric I in the fucking cardboard man. yeah oh God, be uh, so stupid. jason momoa is going to walk around a field with a really shitty looking broadsword and he's going to be fighting skeletons and snakes and then trying to dig for uh, valuable minerals, and also he wound <laughs> up in hell for two hours. Yeah, he's stuck in hell. He couldn't get out of hell. That's going to be. He's like, what will happen in, in Minecraft too? It's like, well, all right. Oh no, Jason's in hell. Dragon. Okay, so I see where this is going. It came full circle. I get it. Um, to tie in with the movie, Pringles is putting out a Minecraft flavored chip called Suspicious Stew. It's coming out soon. That. I don't have an exact date. I don't know what Suspicious Stew is. I don't know if that's part of the game or not. But um, it's going to be a flavor that ties into the game. And we've seen how well that works with Coca-Cola when they tried to make that bite soda. It's like, this is the soda for gamers, and it tasted like mm. vulcanized rubber. It, it was not, not good. good. Tastes so, like a Pillsbury Dough soft baked cookie. Minecraft movie coming in 2025 with Jason Momoa. Pringles Minecraft chips coming. Harry Potter is going to be a TV series now for Warner Brothers. So stupid. Um, JK, On Amazon, uh, Netflix. JK, uh, probably HBO Max because that's what they own. Yeah. 
Um, J.K. Rowling is involved to keep continuity, but will uh, not serve as the showrunner. So she'll be consultant, writer, whatever else they're going to do. Um, I think it involves the original characters, but it's going to be an all new cast. So that's what well, we know they, so the far. The idea, the the initial reports is that each they're going to do try to do seven seasons, and each season is going to be a book. So you know you got your year one, your year two, your year three, and all that stuff. I think it's a are terrible just, idea. Are they just <laughs> remaking the movies then? But as a television well, show, like because yeah. I know there was a lot of stuff in the books that were not included in the movies. Is this right. their chance to get everything that was in those books I now so. into an, into a, a limited series? <laughs> yeah, I think it's done. I think what happened is that they planned on doing a, another movie based off of um, the that last book that she wrote for the series that wasn't originally part of the seven. And the whole cast, you know, basically said, you're a transphobe. We don't want to deal with you. So none of the original cast wants anything to do with it anymore. So now they're thinking, OK, let's just redo it. Let's do a series. We can tell it in long, get all the detail in and um, cash all those checks. Because that's all this is, is just it. There's no reason for it. But whatever. all right. So be it. Um Bob of Oliver. I don't know if this is a joke or not, but he's like, when are we going to get the Tony Hawk Pro Skater movie? I would watch that. It was called Gleaming the Cube. Yeah. <laughs> Dogs Town and Z-Boys. <laughs> you know what? It kind of, it is. Gleaming, <laughs> Gleaming the Cube had a great soundtrack for it. And it had Tony Hawk. In it. I think it was, it was more New Wave driver. at the time, though. Um, but A little punk. It was, it was mainly punk. I don't remember much punk in it. I remember a lot of new wave synth shit in there that that worked with the movie, but I haven't seen that movie in forever, so I'll have to I go look. Christian so Slater cool. and then a bunch of non-important people. Um, he has to go Tony save Hawk his kidnapped brother. Yeah, yeah, there's a cube and he has to gleam it. It was. It, it, this is one of those movies that had two titles. Gleaking I had a poster when I grew up. Teeth. Well, when my dad was around, sad story. Um, he used to do movie posters, so he used never to never want to start. Well, when my dad right. was still around, well, when, my dad oh, when was did he still pass? No, he just left us. Well, he actually did just leave us, and then he actually just passed last year. Um, two for one. Um, he used to print the movie posters. So originally, that to- that movie came out, and I believe it was called A Brother's Justice, and then they changed it to Gleaming the Cube, which makes even less sense. Yeah, <laughs> Brother's Justice actually makes sense to the plot. Gleaming the Cube. I don't know what that's supposed to be. It made it sound like skate punk, hip 80s yeah. kind of shit. For the longest time, I always thought you could like break into a car with one of those skate tools and like, you know, start yeah. the car up. Oh, you totally that's what can. he did. I'm like, yeah, I don't think you can. Um, yeah, the, the cameras <laughs> see you though when you do it. They're like, dude, like, what's this guy doing? Exactly. Imagine all these these digital precautions and safety measures is in there, and you can still go in with like a late seventies skate key, and you can still yes. just pop the car. Yeah, and yeah, he's just stealing everything. It's like they're selling for thousands of dollars on uh, on eBay, and just all these fancy cars, SUVs being stolen by street punks. That's the movie you need. These street punk Tony Hawk's, yeah, they go skating into like Bel Air and Beverly Hills and all these areas, and they're stealing all their cars with basic skating utensils, and then it's just cop chases on the highways in L.A. to to yeah. to Goldfinger and Rancid and No Effects right. and and the soundtrack of a. Uh, of uh, the skating Here youth. Here I am. I mean, that's basically the soundtrack to the movie The Chase, which is probably one of the greatest movies ever made with Charlie oh, Sheen. Go. Did I see that? Charlie Sheen's got Anthony Kiedis and Flea and Henry. Oh, that's Collins. right. That was um where he uh, kidnaps the girl in the in the the convenience the store, station. and then they yeah. just keep driving through L.A. Yes, I forgot about that movie. Oh my god, it's got the greatest soundtrack. The whole soundtrack. I don't know Dead if religion, I... no effects, rancid. I'm not gonna lie. Like, you're, so you're right. I'll, I'm gonna have to put it on my list. I don't think I've seen it. If if oh I did, god, I don't like, remember it. But I, I it's gotta like go a see satire it. spoof on the news because he like kidnaps her, and like the news is just like high speed chase, and like bodies flying everywhere. Like it's this, just, it's a really good movie. All the movie is that the car she was in actually still had one of the the push lighters because she pushes it in at one point and then sticks it on his neck and throughout the rest of the movie he's got this burn mark from the lighter in the round yes Yes, that is the uh, movie where flea rolls a monster truck it was hilarious so good uh and what's his name nedry from uh jurassic park is in it there's so Uh many people in that movie frankie bronson the chat lords of dogtown is a decent skate movie heath ledger i think i remember seeing that i don't remember (laughs) much about the movie but i do know i saw that movie at one point the um, documentary is better, Dogtown and Z Boys. Real so. quick, if you mm-hmm. want to talk about a movie that where the soundtrack was so much better than the movie, I am convinced this movie was only made to promote the soundtrack, and that is Judgment Roadie. Night. 
Oh, Judgment, Judgment Night. Judgment Great Night. soundtrack. With Dennis Leary, Emilio Estevez, Cuba Gooding Jr., <laughs> and... Uh, Ice-T was in it? I don't know if Ice-T was it. No, he wasn't in it because Dennis Leary was the bad guy. Like right. he was the oh yeah Biohazard it, and Onyx Faith No More. It oh, was no, that one of the, great. It was one of the first collaborations of rock and rap together. Like you had Aerosmith of Run DMC in the in the uh, mid to late eighties. You had uh, Anthrax and Public Enemy. They did their thing, but this was a full compilation where like it's um oh wow Helmet and House of Pain. That's yeah, good. read 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 the track listing if you can. Not the, tr- yes, the titles, but just the, the, so the, the band. Helmet and House of Pain, Teenage Fan Club and De La Soul, Living Color and Run DMC, Biohazard and Onyx, Slayer and Ice T. Yes, Faith that one. More, Faith and More, Booyah Tribe, Sonic Youth and Cypress Hill, Mud Honey, Sir Mix a Lot. Uh, Dinosaur Jr. and Del the Funky Homo Sapiens. Dude, yep. shit. that song is one of my favorites on that soundtrack. Uh, uh, Therapy and Fatal, uh, both of them are the only two that don't have links to their name. Uh, Pearl Jam and Cypress Hill. Right. The, one of my favorites is is the uh, the De La Soul and uh, uh, Teenage, Fan Club? Teenage Fan Club where they, it's called Fallen and they're sampling yeah. um, Free Falling from Tom Petty in there. Total recall. That whole soundtrack is amazing, and the movie really is a good. piece of dog shit. I thought I swear that they made the movie in order to promote that soundtrack because that soundtrack was one of the first to do anything like that. Those, well, those it's funny because I typed in Judgment Night on Google, and soundtrack came up before the movie. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. The soundtrack is so gro- is so good, so groovy. So Eric? no, I was gonna say so infinitely you were gonna better. Say groovy. It I'm is not going to say groovy. You were going to say groovy. You can say groovy for me if you like, but I was not going to say that. Groovy. No, there's a lot of movies like that where the soundtrack just is way better. Like uh, Queen of the Damned. That soundtrack was great because <sighs> Jonathan Davis produced it. I'll tell you another shitty movie that had a great soundtrack. I think this was actually a Disney movie, too. It was a live action movie called Meet the Deedles. Oh, with um, Meet the Feebles. No, me- well, there was one actor that I wouldn't know, and then the other one was um, Paul guy, the dude from the uh, Fast and Furious. Meet the Deedles is a terrible movie. I think they were brothers or something. They go mm-hmm. on this weird adventure in Hawaii or something like that, somewhere tropical. But the soundtrack is just all punk and ska bands. Well, they're surfer, they're surfer dudes, and then they get stuck in the middle of like Yosemite yeah. as like rangers. Yeah, I, I like- used to work at Hollywood Video, and we would have to play like G-rated movies. And we would put that on just to break up the cartoons. Yeah. It's not good. It, it's a all. terrible movie, but the soundtrack's fantastic. If I remember correctly, it had like Real Big Fish, Save Ferris, Perfect Thyroid is on there. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm forgetting some of the others. Perfect Thyroid. I forgot about those guys. Remember those guys? Yeah. Um, but yeah, the soundtrack was awesome. So uh, I love, we'll have to do a list of that time where like the movie was terrible, but they had an amazing soundtrack. We'll save that for another time because uh, we do need to get the rest of this done here. Uh, Rhinestone. I don't know that. Sylvester one. Stallone and uh, uh, what's her Dolly Parton singing songs. Is he- oh, oh, I, I, know. I do I, remember I, that one. Oh yeah. my god, and it's him just trying to sing. Oh, it's so it's bad. so bad. It's so bad. Drinking. Just think, I, do, just think of things like uh, uh, the Apple. Stallone. I'll go or, the Apple though. Or um, Xanadu. Phantom of the Paradise. Like, just, oh, my God. The music's great. The movies are terrible. <laughs> All right. We're going we're gonna to race through this to get to some of the trailers so we can get out of here. Uh, April 13th, next week, uh, Renfeld, the Nick uh, Cage vampire movie is coming out. Yeah, it looks out. fun. I'm excited to see that one. Uh, what else do we have here? Um, oh, we're not. We're going to skip these trailers for now. On Disney Plus May 10th, new Muppet movie called Muppets Mayhem is coming out over on Peacock. Not till October, October 27th of this year, is Five Nights at Freddy's. The popular video game, horror video game franchise, uh, has a movie coming out. They only released a couple of uh, stills right now, right? Yeah. Did they put so it's Willy, Willy's Wonderland 2. Basically. There's no trailer for it. I know it stars Matthew Lillard, but I don't know who else is in the cast. Right. Oh, good for him. He's a nice guy. Um, yeah, I've met him. He's great. Yeah, we, we used to, we used to see him at Chiller nice. Theater and cons and stuff all the time. He actually nice sets guy. up with our pal um, Chris from NECA, who does all our yep. artwork and stuff. They're always uh, doing stuff together. No, it was um, real cool. Going over to, uh, we'll get to the, we'll come back to movies in a second, but to TV uh, over at Paramount Plus, April twentieth, a new brand new season of Beavis and Butthead. I saw the last season that they put out. It was actually pretty good. Was I was amazed yeah. that it was that good. Um, HBO Max has spring of this year. 
another MTV show that's getting a revival, Clone High. I don't remember this show, but apparently a lot of people do. There, it's, it's a revival the of it, like early they did with, to mid two thousands, I think. Like they did with Beavis and Butthead. It's a revival. For, so Clone High is coming back again, spring twenty twenty three on HBO Max. Uh, out now, currently. We've been saying it for weeks now. I got to catch up on Paramount Plus. Uh, going through Showtime though on Paramount Plus, Yellow Jacket season two. Uh, next week, April fourteenth on Amazon Prime, the final season of uh, the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. It's a it's a great show if you haven't watched that. So good. Um, also on HBO Max, April sixteenth, the final season of Barry starts with uh, Bill Hader and Henry Winkler. Another fantastic so show. Can't recommend that enough. Um, we talked about this a while ago, coming to Hulu in two weeks um, from the guys from Broken Lizard who did Super Troopers and uh, Slam and Salmon and uh, Club Dread, those kind of movies. Uh, they have Quasi coming out about Quasimodo the Hunchback. All right. So finishing up with the movies here, we have April 21st, Evil Dead Rise. Do we want to watch that trailer? Yay or nay? Because apparently they reference another legendary horror movie and maybe we should watch this. I'll bring this up right here. Why not? What, we, what else are we going to do? Well, I was trying to not watch this trailer. All right. You can sit there. Uh, uh, go grab a drink. Earmuffs and blindfold there, Giddles. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go use the bathroom while we're right back. All yeah, right. you, go, you go away. All right. You do that. We're going to enjoy this. Dead rise. The Shinnin. Don't you want to get now. sued? Oh, hi, George. Quiet, boy. Do you want to get sued? <laughs> But not between four and five. That's Willie's time. That's Willie's time. Yeah, so uh, Evil Dead Rise, the latest in the Evil Dead franchise, comes out April 22nd. Um, I may have to go back. and I, All I've seen is Army of Darkness. I never watched the others. So Army of Darkness is good. It, it, like it, It's a good continuation. It's really goofy. It's very goofy and campy. It is not anything like, well, the original Evil Dead, because that was more horror. And then they got a bigger budget and made the second one, which was a little bit more horror comedy. Right. Yeah, Evil Dead. First one is the Army first, Darkness is comedy. First Evil Dead is like legit. They tried to make a horror. That's second the one that's one, in black like, and white, right? No, no none, none of them are in black and white. white. Uh, the second one. Did they put them out Night, in black and white? You're thinking of Night of the Living Dead, Eric. Oh, okay. Yeah, Night of the Living Dead with the original in the sixties. That, that, that was black and white. No. Okay. Um, uh, and then the second one, yeah, like Jordan said, they had more budget, but they definitely like upped the comedy in it. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, there was less tree rape. Uh, that does not happen God, as I much about that. Uh, in the second movie. Uh, yeah. But they're both great. All right. Two yeah. is definitely, I, 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 if I had to watch one or two I again, two. I would always watch two. Yeah. And then they did a reboot. So they did a kind of like a reboot in 2013, 10 years ago, um, Spanish director, and they made Ash's character a female. And it was actually really good, but they leaned very heavy into the horror and the blood and the guts versus any comedy like it became dark and that's what this one looks like it looks just like it it you're not going to get a laugh out of this at all unless this, you're a uh, so this is like movie. rob zombie doing halloween like uh, yeah essentially of. we're going to strip the comedy and we're going to add buckets of blood I'm and me and giddles will be blood. there in the front row happy about it what was that remember we did uh interviews with john mcginley john c mcginley at Comic Con, and he had a show coming out that I thought was something like the uh, the Evil Dead. I know what you're talking about. Let me look at the title. I I've Stand seen Against a Evil. Episodes. That's what it was called. There it is. Oh yeah, yeah, Stand yeah. Against Evil. That was a weird one. It, apparently, like it lasted I watched like couple, three or four seasons too. I remember I watched a couple of episodes of it, and it was just really was that was that the one where it was like the people in the town and just like bizarre shit just kept happening. Yeah. Because that okay yeah that was a really weird one. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we talked to him for uh, the promotion of that show, and the, that guy's great. I, I'm a big yeah, fan. Yeah, he talks all about his TPS reports and everything. <laughs> Could you tell what it is you're doing here? You do here. Like, we don't know. They just let us in, and we kept our mouth shut and walked around. Yeah. Um, all right, so yeah, we talked about Evil Dead. Um, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, the new animated movie from Sony Marvel, not Disney Marvel, June 2nd. This one I definitely want to watch because this one looks ridiculous. Um, the Barbie movie <laughs> is coming out July 21st, and they've already put a trailer out, and this looks batshit crazy. So, uh, yeah, it looks pretty insane. We are going to uh, take a view of this right here. It's so bright. I've never seen anything so bright in my life. So much pink. So this is not a movie for kids. 
I don't think so. I no. don't think so. Like it looks like it's an adult movie. <clears throat> I mean, the beach. Yeah, that that's a very obvious. Uh, yeah. You know what they're going for there. Wait, what? <laughs> well, you see, instead of beach, oh, okay. they mean okay. the word bitch. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, bitch you off. Makes sense. Thanks, Skittles. All right. Yeah, anything I could help to explain to make the world easier. <laughs> so the, that movie comes out July 21st, the Barbie movie. Um, we'll save Blue Beetle for next week, but um, streaming out right now. We weren't aware this was out. We'll, we'll end the show with this. Uh, a movie called Smoking Causes Coughing. Oh, yeah. I want to see this one. What is this movie saw, about? I don't fucking know, dude. Like, I watched the trailer, and it's like there's superheroes, and they're uh, on this thing called the Tobacco Force, and there's puppets, and things explode, and it's all in French. I don't know. I want to see it. All right. So uh, <laughs> with that, here is uh, Smoking Causes Coughing. I feel like I can, that trailer didn't spoil anything, right? I don't even know what the hell's going on to spoil. Exactly. Yeah. That uh, that, that scene one. where the the chicks in bed and making out making with out the, the, rap, the rap, puppet. is it were they Skeksis? Is that what it was from Dark Crystal? No, it looks like a really fucked up looking Rizzo no, the rat, rat from the it's Muppets. Just some fucking <laughs> weird rat. This, the director does bizarre movies. He does a movie about a telepathic tire that kills people, and he has another movie about these guys who are on a road trip who steal a car, and there's a, a life si- a, a dog sized housefly in their car. He just does weird shit. He is very weird. And they're I've very rubber, very and creative and fun. Movie. Wow! Yeah, wow! Looking forward to that. I want to see I'm, that I, movie. That that reminded me of um, <laughs> Danger Five. Thank you. That's the show where the with the colonels, the the eagle. Yeah. Uh, once I once again kill Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up! It's like whoa, he's so mean for no reason. Don't make me get the sit down gun again, Claire. <laughs> <laughs> or the terrorists yeah, will win. Ooh, feet. <laughs> <laughs> that where where can people watch that show? By the way, Danger Five. Danger Five is on Tubby for free. You could watch it. Tubi.tv. Right. I gotta say, it's Tubby not like is on any... becoming one of my more go-to places to go find. It's the got everything, shit. man. You can watch all the episodes of Masters of Horror for free. It's great, but with that's ads good, in it, that's a good one. Yeah, but it's ads, but whatever. You yeah. don't have to pay for it. All right. It's just like when we had to pay for TV, <laughs> right? <I was> gonna <laughs> Back say. in the day. All right. Well. So much other stuff that we'll save for next week. We do need to get out of here and uh, get on with our lives. And thank you for uh, hanging out here with us, everybody, because I know you want to uh, go and do much better things than uh, continuing watching this program. Uh, so it's time for the plugs. Jordan, our nation's eyes turn to you. Uh, Jinx Ronan on the socials. Uh, watch Later Pod on Instagram for my other show, All Watch It Later Podcast. We watch movies that we probably should have already watched things like you know casablanca and weird korean movies um we also do a snack show every three weeks we just did our last one go check that out we eat all kinds of gross stuff and then uh yeah we read movies it's fun all right gittles what do you have uh, Gittlebase on twitch.tv slash Gittlebase, Instagram at Gittlebase. I'm going to try, uh, it seems like my schedule at work has been falling into the Wednesday, Friday off schedule type thing, so I am going to try and do a feast episode this Wednesday. I uh, Over the summer, last summer, I was upstate and I was at a thrift store between Albany and Utica, and I found a recipe for steamed hams, and I'm going to try and make the oh. actual steamed <laughs> ham recipe from The Simpsons. So we're going to see what happens. All right. Aurora Borealis. All right. Uh, for me, it's Eric Nagel across the board on all the social medias. Follow us uh, on those things and go to itserichnagel.com to find links to audio and video stuff. Uh, if you were listening to us on iHeartRadio, on the iHeartRadio app, we do appreciate that. Again, tell two friends so they can tell two friends. Uh, if you joined us live, you can do so every week in our YouTube and Twitch rooms, also branded under It's Eric Nagel. You can go there. You can uh, participate with the show. Bits, super chats, emoji things dancing around. I don't know. They just keep adding shit and we just go. Okay, eats, that's eats, what you eats. need to do for all that. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> if you listen to the audio version, you want to see the video that you missed, go over to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash it's Eric Nagel, and you can watch uh, the video version of the program on demand. That is it. We are done. We are out of here, and we'll be back here next week. So until the next time, everybody, be excellent to each other and have a wonderful time. And we'll be seeing you. It's Eric Nagel. 
I mean, seriously, his whole shtick is being the world's most indirect asshole. Alas, we're out of time. Follow It's Eric Nagel on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. For ways to listen to the show, go to itsericnagel.com. And remember to tell two friends so they can tell two friends. And they can tell two friends. And they can tell two friends. friends. And those two friends can tell two friends. Well, you get the idea. Keep it real, homies.